Tanya, how you doing? <laughs> how you guys doing? Sorry. I don't know what's wrong, but it looked like it couldn't come on. I don't know if it was on private settings or something. But it wasn't on. I <laughs> couldn't see. Welcome in, guys. Welcome in, welcome in. <laughs> God bless you. Bonita, God bless you. Navi, God bless you. Shannon. Good to hear from you, Shannon. <laughs> All of you from Trinidad. Bridget. How you doing, Bridget? How you doing, Kat? And um, we're just happy, man. God bless you guys. God bless you. Welcome in. Carrie Ann. All the way from Jamaica. <laughs> Pastor Franklin. God bless you, man of God. <laughs> Good to hear from you, man. <laughs> Yes, yes. It is what it is, man. Hallelujah. We want to continue on um, with uh, with part two of the one of the gates of trauma and um, closing them. But we want to just kind of bring in some other things because I believe that there's a spirit that's been fighting us um, in that area. And it is the spirit that is Jezebel. She's known by many different names, <laughs> which we will discuss uh, later as we get into uh, the teachings. But we're going to go into some areas that is probably a little different. But I want to be time sensitive today because I want to pray. God bless you. God bless you, Doc, Dr. Susan, <laughs> Dr. Sandro. Suzanne, God bless you. <laughs> Nisi, God bless you. Hallelujah. Glory Jenkins, God bless you. In the name of Jesus. So today we are excited about what God is about to do. And uh, we know deliverance is going to take place. Amen. And we believe it is already. So we know it's already done. It's just a matter that's going through it. Amen. We have so many testimonies of people being healed all over the world, being delivered, being set free. We have blessings restored back to them. And we know it is it is God and God alone. Rihanna, Linda Royal, God bless you. God bless you. And so today... Uh, we just say thank you, Lord. Father, we just cover this broadcast right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And we thank you, Lord, for your for having your way. And we thank you, Lord, for what you're about to do in this season. We give you glory. We give you praise today, Father. And we just honor you, Lord. We honor you today. I thank you for everyone on this live. God bless them in a mighty way. Uh, Father, we thank you. We thank you for them. We thank you for uh, the breakthroughs that we uh we got so many people who were testifying about their breakthroughs. We did a, a private session with some folks that we know are, you know, very supportive. And we, uh, I couldn't believe the testimonies and breakthroughs that we had. It's amazing. And we bless God for that. Uh, my old good friend from, we grew up together, Wilfred Scott, is on all the way from New York. God bless you, Wilfred. Uh, we grew up together. <laughs> He's my best friend. Uh, and I uh, know him very well. Very nice, very nice uh, man. So I bless God for him. Chantel, God bless you. God bless you. But today we want to discuss uh, what's happening around us as well as what is taking place. And by and large, we talked about gates. We talked about how gates uh, open doors and portals based on whatever spirit you invite in. It could be a spirit that you've brought in uh, through some activations that you've done, something you've done, you might have put your hand to it. <laughs> All right, you might have been in gross sin, consistently sinning, consistently practicing sinning. That's what we call practicing it. Or you could have just, uh, you know, inherited that. Sometime it's sent at you. So there are so many ways for for these things to happen. But by and large, 
one of the biggest things you will encounter is something what I call childhood trauma. And this is something nobody likes to talk about, but most of your life is dependent upon your, uh, your childhood experiences because by the time you're five, from conception to five, from the womb to five, you've already formed some sort of opinion and mental frame that's going to set the pace for the rest of your life. So what that what the enemy does is he brings in these spirits to mess with you. So some people have very bad things that happen, okay? And I know this. Apostle, how you doing? Apostle Zachary, God bless you, man of God. <laughs> doing a good job out there. <laughs> yes. Uh, and so a lot of people overlook this, but studies have been shown that these things that happen over a period of time are that they... Uh, usually get buried deep down because you know we have to cope with stuff and so we figured ways to deal with these things sometimes you have to be tougher than you need to be you know I had to become a different person at the age of like five because I want to go crazy you know I literally had to become another person um, and, and that's what was really um, uh, that was really a lifestyle that forced me to not live or have a childhood. I didn't really have a childhood. <laughs> I was forced to see things I shouldn't have seen. And many of you can attest to the same thing. You looked and you saw things uh, that a child has no right seeing. Sometimes the child, even in the womb, knew that the mother was contemplating uh, abortion or giving them away. They knew all this. So in their, in their cells and in their memory and in that unborn fetus or child, these things already begin to uh, form. They begin to develop imprints, memories, and triggers. These triggers might be operating on two levels. Well, there's so much more on different levels, but we'll deal with two for right now. They operate on the conscious level, and, and, and they operate on the subconscious level. Many people have developed different personalities, altered states of, of perceiving things, not because... They wanted to be this way. It was because it was a coping mechanism to keep them alive because of the adverse situations and trauma. Some people have never spoken to anybody about this, and we call it the vow of silence, okay? The vow of secrecy, things that were done to them so hideous that they rejected it. Uh, sorry, they, they blocked it out, and they hid it in their mind, but it didn't go away, okay? And so... The mind being as resilient as it is, it hit it. It hit it and it blocked it out. It compartmentalized it so they could function. But what it did was it now begins to trigger by itself because it is coming up. Some people are triggered by themselves. They can be triggered by a sound, a smell, a taste, a touch, a code, a mark, a, a tonality, a scent, or even a particular area. Have you ever been to an area and you said, why do I feel like I've been here before? What do I feel like I know this person? It's like a sense of what we call deja vu. That is the mind's way of trying to come to terms with some things that might be there. Your dreams also play a very important part of even your progress. Because sometimes the dream that you're having, even though it's a nightmare, is really something that's been suppressed, buried, hidden, and tucked into you that is trying to come up. But the fact that it is so hard to look at Confronting these things that have been so hideous, so horrible, it is beyond imagining. Imagine you are a young boy and you and your and your uh, friend is hanging out, and then when you uh, you go into this forest, and when you look again, you're having a good time. When you look again, he doesn't have a head. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine what that does to a person? His head was blown off by some wild hunter who. Felt like they was trespassing on his land. Him and his friend hanging out. And then his head is no longer there. And he's splattered in blood. Now, I want you to picture that scenario. You're 10, 12. And that's what happened to you. That takes a lot of resiliency, counseling, and grief. Now you can see what is happening on a global scale. The reason why I'm breaking this down like this is because there is a global scale of trauma. 
And when I say trauma, I mean on a level where there is a portal that has been opening. You guys know from the last session that will be talked about, it is that the mind, being what it is, has ways of coping, ways of suppressing, ways of burying, ways of keeping stuff down. It is almost like a person who has now become so acclimatized and so uh, used to what's happening, they begin to love their uh, even their captors. Do you know that people after a while, because you've been doing it for so long, or been in a situation for so long, you've become uh, so used and acclimatized that you actually make friends with those who are holding you captives. You even fight for them. It's known as Stockholm Syndrome. Well, there's something known as Spiritual Stockholm Syndrome where you begin to make friends with your captors. You begin to fight for them. You begin to keep them uh, close to you because it's the only reality you know. Being free sometimes takes a lot of strength because you're used to the bad treatment. You're used to not being able to make it. You're used to getting partial breakthroughs. You're used to having people slap the door in your face. It's like you have a mark on your uh, body of rejection or hatred. And so that's what you're used to. So when you want to get free, you have to now begin to change the way you're thinking. You need to change the way you perceive things because it is really a mindset. The mindset is built on cultural conditioning, is built on environmental factors, is built on your family line and the propensity of, of that being able to happen. When I say propensity, I mean that there is a high susceptibility rate of you coming under whatever the family line would carry. Not everybody, but most times you are one that is chosen or one that is singled out for a certain uh, thing that carries the family line in certain aspects. Okay, let me make it clear to you. Let me bring it home. Let me drive it home. You find yourself not liking how your dad used to operate in some ways or mom or whatever the case may be. And you say, I'll never do that to my kids and I don't want it to happen. But you find when you hit 50 <laughs> or even 30, you find that automatically you begin to act and do and say the same thing they're saying. Mind you, you don't want to do it. You don't want to be that way, but it is like something that is time released to you that is now functioning beyond your control. You find yourself, you don't want to drink alcohol, but you find yourself gravitating to alcohol and also to the bars. Why? It is because something is driving you there and you said where did it come from why did i have a loss for a certain thing at a certain time you know i could be doing well and i'm doing great and yet at a certain point in time i begin to lust i begin to want this thing to happen it doesn't happen all the times so i'm doing good by all standards but when a certain time at a certain month comes around there is this thing here and i've seen it i know what it is but somehow i've kind of made friends with it is not to the point where I'm free, but I'm not caged. But at the same time, I know that it is something that has been preventing me from moving in the full uh, freedom that God has permitted. The Lord said, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. The enemy, uh, in contrast, says, uh, it says about him, he comes to kill, to steal, and destroy. Many people's lives have been destroyed from the foundation of their life. Many times, people's mother would curse at them from the time they were small. Have you ever been to the point where your mother always cursing at you when is she angry? Have you had your father cursing at you, beating you and slapping you uh, just beyond measure? I'm not talking about discipline. <laughs> I mean, that's good. You know, and sometimes the rod, the rod of correction is needed. But I'm talking about just slapping you out of the clear blue and having you in fear. When you go around them, you in fear because you figure, I don't know when this person is going to slap me. I don't know when they're going to change on me. I don't know when they're going to, they're going to switch on me. You know, uh, one minute they laugh over me, the next minute they knock on my teeth out. The next minute they apologize to me, the next day they curse me like a dog. But it's happening from a parental authority, uh, someone who is a guardian figure. They speak malicious, evil things, wicked things to me. Uh, and as a child, you you know you say you know I, I don't know how to deal with this, so you go out into what escapism. You begin to fantasize. You begin to 
go to a place where you know it's okay you know you go to your safe place and so some people they develop a certain personality they develop a certain spirit and studies have shown as well as many deliverance ministers and deliverance process have shown that most of the time the spirit that is operating as the chief spirit would have told you it got in even from the womb it got in from the time they were three as a matter of fact this spirit uh, that got in during deliverance was talking about how it got in you know they like to brag so the spirit was bragging on how it got in it said that it got in through the mother being a jezebel the mother was a jezebel the mother was mean-spirited and it said that it got into the daughter because the mother was mean-spirited and a jezebel so they said the demon said we arranged for her to be abused and molested and raped and as she was being raped we got in that's how we got in that's how we took control of her life and that is how we prevent her from ever fulfilling her call and her destiny uh, in this life she has been through hell she's been through so much doctors as a matter of fact we made her to hate men we made it to hate men and we hate we made it to be isolated we have spirits working under us and one of the spirit that was working that opened the door upon upon uh deliverance as it was being uh made to talk it said that his name was perversion and so it said that what do you do perversion said he is a low-level demon because there are, there are thousands in her. But what it does is it all it does is opens the door. It opens the door to perversion to bring in more spirits. And so it was being challenged and it was being beaten and it was being, you know, under the power of God, it is been is compelled to talk because they don't like to talk because their very existence depends on secrecy. So after much after much challenging and much beating and much uh 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 fire it told that its chief uh the chief spirit under it who rules it with with with, with fear and with cruelty is jezebel <laughs> you see this jezebel spirit is responsible for a lot of the trauma that's going on in one's life trauma in one's spirit one's soul trauma in one's uh, church this jezebel spirit was was with this child even from conception and it started to brag and boast and it told about how it is going to it is going to literally destroy her it is working on turning her into a lesbian and now it made her and her mother to be best friends so what you have is you have two people who have jezebel spirit that are feeding off each other the jezebel is going back and forth and feeding each other and now what happened is after the mother died, <laughs> she now feels all kinds of remorse and, and sorrow because now she has what to deal with her spirits by herself. Her mother uh, was a Jezebel spirit, but, but also the mother, mother was a practicing rich who would read the tarot cards, read the tarot cards, and also also uh work spell and incantations on people you see how this thing goes now this is a third generation but when you see you've participated in these things going back to this again they look for doorways they look for doorways they look for entry points they look for access points if you are going through something traumatic if you have been having mind battles mind issues you've been having sicknesses that you can't explain many times Many times, the root of your problem is not the symptom itself. It is only emblematic or it is only a physical representation of what is a deeper root issue. Many people, they really just want some level of deliverance, but they don't really want to get to the Tutsi rule, as we say. <laughs> How much bias does it take to get to the Tutsi rule? So... Many people they say you know that's fine it is you know that's okay just get this you know give me a little relief or or whatever we believe uh, in a process of total deliverance we don't want to just see some of your demons go we want to see you totally set free now being that being said we recognize that it is a battle the enemy hates it the enemy hates what we're doing 
And so we know that it is warfare. But the Lord said to set the captives free. That's the commission. We've been commissioned to set the captives free. We've been commissioned to tell the truth in love, according to as we see it, according to the word of God. We've been commissioned and and been sent to challenge the gates. And we, as good soldiers, we lock into what we're doing. Amen. So what happened is these people, like I said, they've become what? Accustomed to their prison. They don't mind getting a little relief, but they don't really want to get to the center of the core or the root or the tree. Okay? So when you are now seeing the family tree, you've seen yourself in a tree, you've seen yourself back to your old neighborhood, you've seen yourself uh, back in a situation where you didn't want to be in, and it keeps coming up. That is something, yes, it may be a nightmare, but it is also something that is pointing out to what you're going through. People sometimes don't want the full thing. They just want a little, I just want a little, um, like a person getting a fix. You ever see a person when they're trying to get a fix? <laughs> and it is the, the spirit of Father Keo, which in, I wrote an amazing book. And this book is really anointed to break and set captives free from this very vile, nefarious, sinister, wicked demon called Pharmakia. It has been so, 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 so pervasive uh, to the point where it has a whole industry built around death and sickness and managing pain. God didn't call you to manage pain. God didn't call you to manage pain to go get your fix to the drug counters. Now, God bless the, God bless the doctors. God bless... Um, uh, uh, the, the pharmacists sometimes because they're just doing their job but at the same time you're not to be addicted or dependent upon these things some people their God is now what the pill I've watched people go crazy when they can't find their pill alright and they've become so dependent upon it they become so uh, customized and acclimatized to it that it is just a way of life alright and what, what the, the industry has done by far by by and large is it has made the the situation to the place where you are what you just are masking the symptom there's no real deliverance there's no meal there's no real deliverance what you're getting is something that is just giving you a little ease but it's no real deliverance that's why people are turning to different methods of healing not all are bad some people are dealing with holistic when i say holistic i mean they're changing their diet they're beginning to uh see that they they can't eat genetic uh, uh sorry genetically modified food or gmos they're finding out that a lot of these things have something called xenoestrogens and that is causing a lot of problems the processed food these are things that the enemy has been using to keep our bodies sick and i talk about it in this book about how these things is a vicious system and cycle for you to live your life in a state of inflammation. Now, one of the things that the spirit of arrested development or childhood trauma does is it releases a spirit called inflammation. Yes, inflammation as a result of this trauma is the thing in your body that now goes into the body and creates all kinds of sicknesses, disease, and also limitations. See, it has a physical manifestation, but it has a spiritual source. What you see and what you feel and the lump in your throat, the lump in your breast, the, 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 the sore foot, the swollen foot, uh, the eye problem, it doesn't begin there. It is only the physical manifestation of a deeper root issue. Many times people don't recognize it is a spirit of hatred, a spirit of bitterness, a spirit of unforgiveness that's operating through a hurt, a trauma, a wound from a childhood situation that opened, this, opened them up to vicious demons and devils that are deeply buried, deeply entrenched in their life that is now playing out physically in a disease and it is, it is, it is free to roam. It is known as eating your flesh and drinking your blood. In the parlance of, of uh, occultic people, they know how to do that. They do a research on your history. When a witch is about to attack you, what she will do is she will study you. She will study your movements, study how you operate. She will now begin to look into your past uh, life and your generational bloodline. She will find out who is the ruling spirit, what is the predominant thing in your life that is occurring in your family line, whether it is memory loss, whether it's hair loss, whether it's uh, uh, 
atropicia, propicia, whether it's gum disease, uh, whatever it is, she finds that. And then from there, she crafts a plan of attack against your mind. One of the things that they first start to do is they start to fight you in the area of your prayer life. We talked about this on last Sunday about prayer being the basis for your deliverance. If you have a domineering mother, if you have a controlling uh, father, if you have a a manipulating parent uh, in your life, from the time you were in the womb to three years old, you've already set, they've already set something over you. It is a spirit of control and manipulation. It is a spirit of domination and intimidation. It is a spirit that is now beginning to operate. If she has a Jezebel in her, if she has bitterness and resentment, that is going to be part of what operates in you. You love the Lord. You've given your life to the Lord. You're saved. And you are you just, just so love the Lord. But when it's time for you to move forward to get married is a problem. <laughs> You've been to several engagements and nothing resulted in marriage. You find out that this thing is like it's pulling you back into the same position that your mother was. You're no further than your mother. She's no further than her mother. And if you look back, you'll find that the mother before her was like that. So that means that there is something operating because of an ancient covenant of a gateway that resulted from trauma, arrested development spiritually, and also childhood womb problems. Some children don't want to be born because they already sense you don't like them. They already sense they don't want, they don't, they're not wanted. They don't want to come and they, they cause complications because they know they're coming into a world. Uh, they know it on an instinctive level that 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 they're coming here to be punished and, and mistreated and maltreated and spoken down and beaten and abandoned. And so they know it, so they, they don't want to come. They don't want to come here. And when they do come here, they give you problems because they recognize that it is something that is in the system of what takes place between conception and even the womb, even the umbilical cord and the placenta. They know the bloodline. They know the lifeline that is being passed through. They feel the trauma, the pain. They feel it. They're not wanted. They feel like, you know, uh, I, I don't, I'm not wanted here. And so they develop that and they come out fighting from the womb. They come out ready to deal with someone. So they have something called aggressive or unprovoked aggression. Have you had a child who every time you send him to school, he beating up the kids or get in the fight and you can't figure out why? It is something in his bloodline. And sometimes what happens is because the child has not been nurtured, loved, validated, he has developed what I call an aggression complex because the prefrontal cortex of his of his mind has not developed the sufficient nurturing abilities so he is now a narcissist and a sociopath now god can change that god can change that and he and he will you hear me god can and he will sometimes people their situation is because they lived in a state of poverty and a state of hunger they were not able to get the proper nutrients for their body. They were not able to eat properly. They was always on the verge of starvation. And they were they they didn't get the proper food or, or, or vitamins that was needed. And so their body and their mind developed is not fully developed. <laughs> it's kind of like stunted. It's stunted. Yes, poverty is a spirit. But also when you can't get meals and you're hungry and and and, and, and uh uh, people come around you and you feel shame of your poverty. You feel shame because even the poor people calling you poor. You grew up embarrassed because it was never enough. You had to wear hand-me-downs. You had to wear shoes or or, or, or or clothing three times their size and people knew it. And so when you went to school, they would laugh at you or they would make fun or they would call the shoes you're wearing. <laughs> you know, they would call them, they would call them uh, sweet waters. We used to call them sweet waters. Or they'd call them nanny pickers up, you know, because you didn't have it. You know, you wanted Nike, but your mother, she couldn't afford anything. So she got you something called bikey. You remember that? There's a bikey shoes and you'd go there with your bikey shoes and all the children had their nice fresh shoes on. And, and it made you feel funny. And you try to, you try to take off the bikey and you try to, you try to write Nike on it, you know, so it could look like it's Nike. Uh, and you put Nike on, but everybody could see it's a marker and they start to laugh at you. You've been through that. Uh, and you've been through that where you, you wear the same clothes you wear the last year and the year before that and they put you in the lunch program with, with all the uh, with all the children who who are uh, you know just unfortunate in that area 
and some people they put you in foster home foster care you've been tossed around by family members from one place to the next there's a feeling of not being wanted or loved that is a very deep thing because it 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 breaks up it breaks up it breaks up um it breaks up uh the 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 continuity see god put children in the family so they could be nurtured loved and they could flow so once they have a well balanced perception of life they could be they could be contributing citizens to society but what happened is the enemy sees this knows this knows the the fallen world knows that god said you know what he said in the garden concerning uh concerning the snake uh he said he said you know you're going to bruise uh you're going to bruise my son's heel but he can crush your head all right and and he's going to destroy your children yeah you can destroy your children and your, your children will fight against him but at the end of the day you're going to be destroyed he knows this he knows this so he went about doing everything he could to stop the messiah from coming to stop the godly seed that's why he fights you in so much areas and one of the areas he fights you in is trying to really get that place where you find your godly spouse your godly spouse is the thing that you've been looking for for a long time and yet it is like a it's like looking for needle in the haystack sometimes why is it like that it is like that simply because there are some things that had taken place as a result of some things that happened in the past some things that were invoked some some emotion some emotional trauma that you went through and some covenants that caused something to what marry you it marries you so it sees you as a wife it doesn't want you to move forward because it is now policing your bloodline this is known as a gate evil gate of trauma that has invoked this thing over your life and you may say that happened 15 20 years ago that happened 30 years ago i forgot all about that but they have not forgot about it when i say they have not forgotten about it it means that there is a place where you'll find that you reach a plateau you can't go any further you can't reach the next level I prayed with so much people and I'm I'm in this you know all the glory but it is not because we are uh doing anything wrong it's sometimes what is done to us many times people uh wonder why did I have cancer suddenly lord no you didn't just develop cancer suddenly it is because of a prolonged traumatic situation in your is fighting you you had some things that is underlying from bitterness resentment rage anger that has been fighting and eating you slowly and so you uh or someone you know might not realize it but their body is living in a state of what i call fight or flight let me explain you are living in a state of agitation because of what was done to you you feel like you constantly fight you you feel like you're constantly running you feel like you're constantly going somewhere and doing this you feel like you're constantly up to that why is it like that that is because there's a state of what emergency you're in a state of 911 that means that your body your will your emotions has been hijacked by a very malevolent spirit people don't like to talk about it because they want to be they want it to be brushed under they just want one prayer and they they get loose and sometimes god can do it like that but sometimes you have to look at your life why is it that you accident prone yeah some spirits actually cause you to be accident prone you get a car and next week you mash it up you walk downstairs you trip down break your leg you go to the mall someone just run into you uh, and mash you up uh, for whatever reason and you say well, what happened you drive your car along the highway someone from across the street they come directly at you cuz they looking at their phone okay they're looking at their phone and you say hey are you blown 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 at the last minute they turn off and they say i never saw you i was looking I, you know i never saw you i didn't even know you was there but what happened is that means that there is something that is now trying to align your life to go in a certain direction it is the spirit of death sometimes you'll find that you pick up on things okay let me tell you something the spirit of of death hell and the grave is very real some people have made an unconscious agreement hallelujah with the spirit of death they might not even recognize they did it but they have a death wish in the spirit and sometimes it is because of a nightmare or dream that they were activated in the spirit of death the spirit of death hell and the grave are very real spirits and it does not kill you right away no what it does is it strips you of things it strips you of values it strips you of your spiritual life it strips you 
psychological life. It begins to kill good relationships in your life. It begins to kill your prayer life. It begins to kill off your uh, your your finances. It begins to kill off uh, a certain things that you had planned, and it just mysteriously disappears. Projects, goals, dreams. These spirits that have been sent, they either can be activated hypnotically. Yes, there is a hypnotic spirit called death. People can send this thing at you. It can be released. And sometimes there is a mass hypnosis of the spirit of death. And constantly, you could have been hurt so bad. You could have been hurt so bad from situations or you've been through such a bad, bad situation that you just say, you know what? I just give up. You you are walking dead. So what happened is, uh, truth be told, you've already checked out. <laughs> You checked out a long time ago. You are still 20 years in the past because of what's happened to you. You are moving, you are living, but by all accounts, it is a zombie form. You are zombified because the person who you hurt or hurt you is still holding you to that place. Sometimes it could be the death of a loved one, the death of a child, the death of uh, even a church family, even family members that did you bad, even family uh, situations that did you bad. And I had the I had the pleasure of the of this delivering this lady. She was about eighty years old. Thank you, Jesus. And so her her, her uh, I think it's her her daughter in law and the son. They they you know they came to me say, man of God, we've been looking for you all about. Uh, we you know we need you. We need you because we took we took our our mother to so much different churches and and, and look like she's the same way. She would sit she would sit in the in in the house. And she would do this all day. And she'd go to a wall, the wall, and she'd do. That's what she'd do. She'd do that from she do that from the time she get up to the time of the evening. That's all she did. All she did was just talk to herself and look at the wall. There's a wall. And she would just be talking to herself, looking at the wall. And so he said, Man of God, can you help her? So I tell her, said, you know, I said, you know, man of God, bring her. I said, prayers can't prayers can't hurt, you know. Let's bring her. And, you know, he said, I've been trying to find you. I've been finding you for so, I've been trying to find you for so long. I finally caught up with you. So I said, okay, bring her to the service. Um, that's when we're doing the services in Donna's home. Donna, Anita Rogers, we're doing the services in Anita Rogers' home. God bless you, Anita. God's going to do something special for you. Uh, and we've seen so many miracles um, at, a, at a place, you know. And God hasn't forgotten you, Donna. God hasn't forgotten you. Oh God. That's why he's taking your business international. That's why he bless you with products that sell over the world. Your, your products are going to go international and global. That's why God blessing your life. Amen. He's not forgotten what you did. And so she uh, she came there. And for most of the service, she sat in a state looking at me like, like, you know, looking at me. Some of you might have been there. Some of you might have been there when it happened. She started there looking at me like, like, like she wanted to kill me. And when I talked to her, she didn't answer. So we just continued to minister. And I continued to, to just praise. We praise the Lord. And we had to break down some atmosphere. And break down some some things that was around. And by the time we finished with her, she was able to walk again. She couldn't walk. She was able to walk again. She started talking, and she's doing okay. She's doing okay. We break the spirit, all right. Because I told her that I see you resentful. I say you're resentful and you're bitter and you're hurt at what happened. Apparently, what happened to her is that she was she she and a bunch of sisters. Uh, sisters from a church they started a ministry and they started praying together they started praying together they would go out and minister to people and they would go out and help people you know and and they would pray for the city pray for the nation pray for any need that, that came about but what happened is over time some of them started to talk about her and the, and what happened is eventually they started praying against her and they ostracized her from the group and told her she's she uh she's no longer part of the group and they don't want anything to do with her um and they kicked her out that was the beginning of trouble and i told her said you got to release them you got to release them and let them go because she couldn't even talk and she i said can you hear me can you hear me can you hear me can you hear me and she wouldn't talk she wouldn't talk she wouldn't talk and we prayed over her and we ministered to her and we ministered ministered and it took a long time and then she began to talk and begin to scream and holler because she couldn't talk and she got a voice back and she began to release them people you hear me she began to release them but apparently what they did is they began to pray on her, what I call psychic prayers. They began to pray on her and actually curse her. 
And so by doing that, they opened up a door over this woman's life to hijack her and she was in a state of paralysis. She was literally catatonic, amen, catatonic. And so they came to me as a last resort. They was like, you know what, we, she's in another hospital. She's sitting down here talking to the wall, sitting down to the wall, murmuring, you know, let's just try this man. This, let's try this crazy man who around here praying for people. <laughs> who does be on the lawn talking? But sometimes you have to be crazy for God. You have to step out and be crazy for God, amen? And when you are... Uh, beginning to do this, you're going to be a target of Jezebel. <laughs> Jezebel hates true prophetic voices. And right after that, we had a very powerful service. Then we had a Jezebel attack, a strong, and I can tell you guys about it. Remind me, we had a very vicious Jezebel attack right after that. At the point where they was trying to destroy um, the ministry and, and, and my name. They was trying to bring me into something where they was trying to destroy my name. And, um, and so... She left, and I, 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 I didn't see her for a little while, and I didn't talk to them. So I saw the gentleman again, and I said, hey, how's mom doing? He said, man, listen, she's doing well. She's walking around. She's she's praying again. She's going in and out of the house. You know, so sometimes she have a little relapse every now and then because, you know, I said, you know, you have to bring her back again. I said, this is just, you know, bring her back again, you know. That was about two years ago. <laughs> and so when he seen me, he came up to me. He said, man, I've been looking for you. I've been looking for you. And this guy turned around and put over three hundred dollars in my hand. I was, he said, you don't, you, you said, you don't want money yet. You don't want money. I said, no man, no, no, no. I, I good, I good. Uh, he said, he said, man, but I just want to say thank you, man. You know, because mom is doing much better. You know, and she's taking care of herself and just walking around. And so, what I'm saying, saints, is that sometimes your problem is very close to you. Sometimes the issue you're dealing with is not very far away. The perpetrator and the cause of it, the one who's opening the gate is a lot closer than you think is a lot closer than you think now am i saying that to make you paranoid no what i'm simply saying is that for those who are close to you they know how you operate they know how you move they know what uh takes you off what makes you happy how they could get at you the one who you live with the one who you know they know exactly what to say on how to how to really just you know really just uh, get your goat they know how to <laughs> They know how to, to really push your buttons if they want to. Now, I'm not saying that they should do it, but I'm saying if they want to, they know what to say and how to say it, that you could say, listen, but you better you better ease up because now you talk. Listen, stop, you know, because they know you from what? Familiarity. That's the same thing that the enemy did. Familiarity breeds contempt, all right? Here it is, Satan was given such a wonderful position in heaven. And over a period of time, he began to what? Get covetousness. He began to covet God's position. Yet he was what? Beside the Trinity, he was the greatest. He was what I call an assistant pastor. You might have said he's an assistant pastor. Satan was a minister of music, but he's also a assistant or associate pastor. Let's look at it like that. God was the chief pastor and the chief shepherd. He was the under shepherd. He had access and privilege that nobody else had. He was able to move in and out of the presence of God without any delay. He had unlimited access the other angels didn't have that access he had it he had the ability to move in out of god's presence but over time he began to covet see when god sent people in your life to help you a lot of times uh they begin to believe it's all about them now and they begin to what to undermine and to take away things from you yes saints. sometimes you have people that are operating in the jezebelic office they will come and they will begin to fight you because they now want what you have. They want uh, the ministry that God has given you. When God, in point of fact, has called them to be a help, a help and a uh, 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 armor bearer, but they now begin to go behind your back and begin to say, you know, he all that good. I, I know some things about him you don't know. I, I, I You know, you know see what I see in right here? You know what? I praying for him right now, and I and I get a funny spirit right now, and I don't know, you know. But I do I do my prayer meeting right now, and I, I start up this thing, and uh, hey all that, hey all that. But what happened is, see, God has something called delegated authority. You might not like it, but that's the way God is. God is a person who loves order. The first order of heaven, the first law of heaven is order. The first order, the first order of heaven. Sorry, the first law of heaven is order. God has structures. He worked through people. He worked through Moses. He worked through Abraham. He worked through his delegated authority. He worked through Joshua. He worked through those people. Your leaders in your church, they are over you for a reason. All right? 
And if you have been talking about them, lambasting them, throwing them under the bus, then you need to repent. They might be off in some areas. Let God correct them. That's not your position to correct them. That's not your business to talk about them. If you're doing that, you're operating in the same spirit of Lucifer and Jezebel. Jezebel do the same thing. Jezebel and Lucifer, as a matter of fact, they're just like two peas in a pot. Okay? The spirit of Lucifer will do that. The spirit of Lucifer will come right up under you. Talented, anointed, gifted, and, and I mean full of, full of all kinds of ideas. And then turn around, turn around, begin to stab you in the eye and take everything from under you. Take your ministry, take your church, take everything from you. Because why? They came in there with an agenda. And when you come in there with an agenda, God is going to expose you and deal with you. Just like Absalom, he did the same thing. That spirit of Absalom is the same thing. Many people don't recognize that this is the spirit that is operating in them. And that's how a demon get in. And we've dealt with so much deliverance. And we asked, how do you get in? They got in through, through the person either messing with something they shouldn't have messed with. For instance, uh, dealing with people that they shouldn't have dealt with things, putting on rings they shouldn't have put on from people they got who, who put them, put on this ring and wear this and wear that. And you know it wasn't of God. You know that thing was not of God. And you end up getting in trouble because you now have taken it upon yourself to begin to what promote heresy and sedition and treachery. And, and you've planted seeds of confusion and division that is not of that is not of God. Whenever a person goes about doing this, they come on and they begin to listen to what you say. But instead of encouraging you and coming to you and messaging you, they go and talk about you to someone else. When a point of fact, they just say, you know what? Let's pray for this brother. You know, hey brother, we don't know. We we, we don't we're not sure about this, but here's what we're getting. You know, so they would have brought it to your attention. I tell you, listen, there is such a spirit in this body that is going around it is very 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 wicked and this spirit is the jezebel spirit now i want you to notice something the spirit of jezebel always looks for a weak man a jezebel spirit needs to find a weak man a jelly back man they actually go like oreo and milk together okay it is the spirit that will, 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 will operate behind the scene and it will control the whole narrative one of the most difficult spirit that i've encountered in deliverance is the jezebel spirit the Jezebel spirit and the spirit of Lucifer. Now, when I say the spirit of Lucifer, it doesn't mean Lucifer himself. Now, what happens is you have a lot of demons who, because of their high rank and because of their service to Lucifer, could take on the appellation or the name of being a Lucifer. It's an order, <laughs> but it's not, it's, not the, it's not the Lucifer himself. It's, it's just the fact that they operate in that order. Okay, So they could call themselves Baal, all right? but they're not, the, they're not the real spirit of Baal. They're not Baal himself. <laughs> All right, what they are is they're operating in the order of a Baal, okay? In other words, they have come to the place where they've killed so much people, destroyed so much lives, and, 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 and have earned those medals. And so they are in the order of Baal. So when you ask them what their name is, they'll say, well, I'm Lucifer, the spirit of Lucifer. But is, is, is he really the true spirit of Lucifer? I doubt it. Uh, I doubt it. I doubt it. Because, because this spirit is very high, amen? The only thing more powerful than the spirit of Lucifer is God himself, amen? It's a very powerful spirit, all right? So for him to be down there when he's doing deliverance, it's usually just, it's just another demon that, that is carrying the title. He's not really Satan himself, <laughs> all right? He's just carrying the title, all right? Because he's in the order of, this, of, of, of a Lucifer. And so what I'm saying is that sometimes you have a Jezebel spirit. is not really the spirit totally of Jezebel. It's one who's operating in, in her uh, ministry or who's under her auspices because Jezebel has thousands and thousands upon uh, of soldiers and a kingdom that is under her because she's been from there from the beginning. One of her names is Lilith. Okay. One of her names is Lilith. 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 Lilu. All right. Her name is Diana Artemis. Her name is, is, is Annette or A-N-U-T. <laughs> okay. And she operates from time immemorial. Yes, from time immemorial. She's also known as a vampire. Okay? And there's a call of them vampires because she's a suck man's blood. And she also used to kill children. So a lot of people who are having um, children, uh, what do you call it? Sudden infant syndrome death. It is because of the same spirit. They have not gone anywhere. Because in deliverance, they, they come up. And they tell us what their name is because they can't, they, they can't lie to you after a point. They have to tell the truth because they, they, want, they want to get out so bad. And it's like you put 
a lie detector test to them, but you also put a truth, a truth test. Remember how Wonder Woman had that 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 uh, that, that lasso <laughs> that is to compel them. Well, that's what happens in the realms of the spirit when they when they're dealing with it. So Artemis, Artemis, Artemis was also a very powerful uh, Jezebel spirit of her time. Kali, Venus. As a matter of fact, Lucifer is really a planet. Lucifer is a planet. It's called the Morning Star planet. Do you know that? Lucifer is really a planet. It's called the morning star. What is known as the morning star? The morning star is Venus. Venus is the morning star planet. And so it is the is the place where we get venal. All right? Venal from or venal love. It is the love of is the is the goddess of passion. And so you see, it is a god and a and a goddess. So what we have? We have an amorphodite, a morphodite, pansexual, transsexual <laughs> spirit. That's why they're pushing this agenda with the transsexual, pansexual. Uh, transgenic movement because it is how their orientation are they they are both male and female and so Isis Diana Asa Aset Sakmet Basset Annette Astari was the consort they, they were all the consort of Baal and she Annette was actually uh, sorry Ish, Ishtar where we got a starte from is the Phoenician uh, the Phoenician uh, version of her. See this, they all took them into different parts of their nation when they were confounded in Babylon. When they were confounded in Babylon, they all took a version of her to different places. Now, Astarte was the daughter of the moon god called Sin. Yeah, there's a moon god called Sin. And Sin uh, was a god that was worshipped in the ancient Phoenician time. And he's come back again in a lot of ways. And so he's changed over time and over a period of time. His name now is known as Allah. Okay, people don't recognize that, but his name is known as Allah. Back then, they would call him Sin, but his name is really Allah. His name also is Dagon. Dagon. Are you guys getting this? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So when you're dealing with a Jezebel spirit that is controlling people, that is manipulating, creating problems, causing arrested development, causing people not to flow, uh, creating childhood traumas. Yes, her spirits do that so she can enter. When you're dealing with her, you cannot counsel her out. You cannot talk to Jezebel out in physical or as a demon spirit in a person's life. She has to be evicted. She has to literally come out. She has to be taken out. She has to be forcefully evicted. When you confront a Jezebel spirit, she will become very defensive she will become very angry and she will try to put fear in you. Notice now when the Jezebel heard what had happened on Mount Carmel with the showdown of Apostle, I mean, sorry, <laughs> Prophet Elijah and the, and the prophets of Baal. Instead of falling on her knees and worshiping God, she sent out a threat to him that I can make you like one of these by Baal himself, by the gods. I, I'm, I'm going to, by this day, you can be just like one of them. And yet, where was Ahab? Who is behind the throne? It was still, what? Jezebel. She ran the whole show. Ahab didn't put his foot down with this woman and say, listen, this is a prophet of God. Shut up. Be quiet. He let this woman do whatever she wanted to do. As a matter of fact, she turned the, she turned the nation of Israel through her marriage, through a political marriage. She came from the Sidonian kingdom. At Etabel was her father. And what happened is they wanted to create peace between the nations and what they would do. So I wouldn't come, I wouldn't attack you and side your side of my enemies attack you. I would marry your daughter so so I could get peace. But when he married her, she brought in her priests. She brought in four four hundred and fifty uh, prophets of Astarte, and she brought in four hundred and fifty prophets of Baal. Uh, I think 425 because I think it was all to get 850 and she made them eunuchs in other words she emasculated them she emasculated these spirits uh, these persons and she had them eaten at a table in other words if you want to eat a Jezebel table you have to now begin to become a woman she has to run the relationship she has to tell you what to do how to eat what to say when to say how to get up see the spirit doesn't want a man it hates strong male authority because chances are she had a problem with her dad they had a probably dysfunctional relationship they never could connect or her dad molested her sexually okay or some sort of inappropriate behavior 
or molestation. And that's how we was able to find out what happened to this lady. She was so, she would dress so funny all the time. You know, she would dress really strange in terms of, you know, her clothing very tight and, and you know, she was flirty and, you know, she was just flirting with everybody, just walking up and down the place and, you know, just, just out there. And we had a visiting evangelist coming out of town. This was back in the day. And when I look again, the woman on her belly foaming and growling and picking up the elders and throwing them around like they were, like they were papers. This, this girl only weighed about maybe 110 pounds now. And I watched her throw some of the elders. They took, they took about 10 guys to hold her down. Little girl. All right. And when she was being delivered, when she was being delivered, and they asked her how the thing got in, it said it got in through rape and incest. Incest from her dad. Her dad was raping her from she was three years old. And this thing grew in. But for her to cope with it, for her to cope and for her to split and for her to, uh, to survive, she had to be fragmented. And this is another thing that we talk about with these MK Ultra monarch uh, assassins and uh, uh, slaves, mind control slaves. They literally have to split, all right, their personality and they use it through trauma. Now they're getting sophisticated. They don't need trauma as much. They can use frequency and vibrations to do it to you. But most of, most, of, most of the time, they employ shock. They employ electrical shock. The shock can activate you. The shock can cause you to have memories. Or it can take away memories. They also give you buzzwords or activation words. Okay? And we talked about it in the last couple of sessions. But you'll find it in, in, the, in the books we're doing. You'll find it in the Pharmacia book, in the Pharmacia series book. And you'll find it in, in, um, in the book on the Illuminati that we wrote. Okay? It talks about the same spirit. Okay? And it, uh, it gives you a lot of insight. Now, this same spirit, Jezebel, was also known as the Queen of Heaven. They talk about it Je uh, in Jeremiah uh, 44, Jeremiah 7, and 19 as well. They talk about how they were burning incense to the Queen of Heaven. That was Jezebel, again, as, as the Queen of Heaven. So what she will do is they will burn incense to her. And as they're burning the incense to her, she send, for, she send down the blessings, to, the rain to the crops. Okay, She was the rainmaker. The rainmaker goddess, but what she also did too is uh, the 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 spirit of Jezebel had what I call the sacred prostitution temples. These sacred prostitution temples were there for people to go and cleanse their sin through having um, um, intercourse with a sacred prostitute or a male prostitute. And so the males they would make them eunuchs. The priests would be eunuchs because they had they would they would go with the males, you know. So they would have sodomy, all right. But they, it was considered sacred. And so all this was an abomination to the Lord. So when she got into power, she began to persecute the prophets of God and the true voice of God. So Jezebel's ultimate assignment is to destroy the true prophetic voice of God. So the prophets um, had to hide in the caves. 100 prophets were hidden in the caves, you hear me? And they were eating bread and water. They were not eating the steaks and the lobster. They were not dining at Jezebel's table and drinking the, 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 the fare that was sacrificed to idols. This spirit is also the spirit that works in the times now because she calls herself a prophetess. So this spirit is the spirit of self-promotion. You know, this spirit also wants to big itself up. It wants to seem spiritual. It wants to seem like it's all there. You know, I've been fasting for 40 days now. You know, I've been doing 80 days. I've been doing 80 days praise now. You know, I had a word from the Lord about you. You know, I saw what's happening. Because Jezebel is not a true prophet, but she's very clairvoyant. She has a psychic spirit. All right, but she does. She cannot go where the true prophet could go. She cannot go where the true prophet could go. There are some women who have a Jezebel spirit. They will track a brother down who has a call in his life, marry the brother because he's going to be a pastor, and rule the church right from there. She will take over the church. And when that brother begins to stand up and say he won't get the church back, she will embarrass him in the church. She will control him and have her way and do what she will do. She will run the elders, chase the, chase the deacons, control everybody. Business, get in everybody's business, know everybody's business, ruin the man's ministry and destroy it because ultimately that's what her desire is to destroy the work and the ministry of God. Whenever you see a true prophetic voice begins to prophesy and speak into a person's life, a Jezebel spirit or a Jezebel uh, individual will be right there and the person say, sometimes I felt like that woman was projecting some hatred in me because I could feel the barbs in my mind, feel the barbs in my back, feel this thing happening to me because she doesn't want true, true prophetic release. In other words, if you see a person gives you a very accurate word of knowledge, wisdom, or insight, 
she goes home and prays against that word and commands that word not to come to pass so she could well, stop the destiny of that person. Then she would what bring the person to her. See, see, Jezebel is dysfunctional. Jezebel is wounded. So what happened is when she see other wounded people, is like a predator. Jezebel is a predator spirit. She'll get all the wounded, all the disgruntled, all the hurt people, all the people who have deep inner scars, and she will gather them around her. She'll begin to nurture them. She'll begin to help them. She'll begin to listen to them. She'll begin to call them over to her home. She'll begin to cook for them and call them but she doesn't really want to help them what the jezebel spirit is doing is she's gathering information and intel on you to destroy you later on because she could control you with information so she makes it a point to go about and find out all she could about you she will troll you she'll go on your facebook page she'll find out who know you she'll find out uh everything about you yes she will even want to do things for you and i've talked about how she can be very helpful very useful uh she can make herself indispensable but not because it's true service to god it's because she wants to control the narrative because jezebel is saying i'm not gonna allow anybody to hurt me again <laughs> and i want to control everything so she could be hyper what hyper 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 vigilant have you ever been around somebody who's hyper vigilant <laughs> It is miserable to be around them because everything is a problem because they see everything very quickly. But it's because of hurt and wounds that has been never dealt with, never really dealt with. And it's a Jezebel spirit somehow controlling the narrative because of a generational curse. So they make life miserable for you because uh, they want to control. They control through what? Complaining, manipulation, always talking. Do you ever see a woman beating her husband down till he's about, he was six feet four, but now he's, he's five feet ten? Because she beats him down with her mouth. She beats him down with complaining. She beats him down with always finding fault. See, this is what the spirit does. And the person might not even be aware they're doing it because they're, they're being accessed by a spirit. Okay, a spirit is accessing them. They might not even be aware that they're doing it. Because what happened is Jezebel ultimately doesn't want a man. What she wants is a toy boy or a eunuch or a weak jelly back spineless man who she could control so her thing is that she wants to control the leadership so what she'll start to do is she'll start to pray against the leadership and begin to destroy them that's why men who engage this woman or who married to her find out they have plenty problems with their knees with the top of their head with the sole of their feet they have they have things wrong with them because this Jezebel spirit would not allow them to function and walk in the proper course. They begin to become lethargic and they begin to be fearful in their ministry and home because Jezebel, when you confront her, she promotes fear. Look at Elijah, prophet of God, running from this little woman, just destroyed, called on fire from heaven, part the, part the Jordan, uh, you know, just did all kinds of miracles, stopped rain. I mean, rain for three years, it didn't rain for three years. <laughs> And then when he confronted Ahab, Ahab said, you trouble of Israel. He's, and Elijah said, you know, thank God for Elijah's, you know. She might have beaten, she might have, she might have put fear in him and sent a fair demon at him because him to run for his life and to leave his place of assignment. That's what Jezebel's spirit will do. It'll cause you to leave the place of your assignment. And a Jezebel spirit will begin to assassinate your character. That's how she did, she did with Naboth. She assassinated Naboth's character. We know this. And if you have one in your church or your ministry, listen, you got to confront them. You could pray. And you could ask God to help, and you could counsel. You need to confront them, call it out. Now they're gonna they're gonna respond in kind because they're gonna say, "So what about you doing this?" See what a Jezebel spirit will do when you call her out. She'll say, "So what? How come you could do that? Who who is you to do this?" See what she will do is she's now flipping the script. So you find yourself backpedaling, and you find yourself running. And well, you know, I didn't want, and I didn't, yeah, I didn't. So what if I do that? Yeah, I, yeah, that's true, you know. But see what happened is now she turned the, she turned the script on you and you now backpedaling when the issue was her. So she's effectively counteracted you. When leadership calls her out, she turns around and says, You all ain't praying enough. You all are here doing all this stuff. You're only on my level anyhow. See, this spirit will find fault. This spirit is very critical. It is judgmental. It is tied into the religious spirit. You hear me? The religious spirit and Jezebel and the spirit of Lucifer. It is a serious combination, guys. It is a serious combination. And this thing, childhood trauma development, because what happened is it gets the child at an early age. Many people say, you know what? I found out from a small child that I like men. I don't know why, but I just like older men. And I like to dance for them. They used to call me, call me around, and they'd give me money and put this in my hand. And I'd be dancing for them and wind up for them. 
Yes, they had children who said they'll be winding up while they're five and six for the older men, and they don't know why. Some of them said they sit on the older man and they whine. Uh, was they playing dominoes and they wondering why? Why am I? Why? Where did I? Why, why wind up on this old this old man? Why I love this old man? I want this old man. That's because the spirit already got them from something that happened. Chances are they were molested, or the mother was molested, or they were beaten, or or somehow they were touched when they were young, and now the spirit has entered them, and so now they begin to find out that you know, hey, I have a talent for this. I know how to get money from men, and now if I do favors for them, if I play with them, if I do this, if I give them you know oral sex or whatever the case may be, they're touching this uh, as good. I could get money. I could get candy. I could buy this. I could buy that. I could I could buy the the iPhone I want. I could buy the I could buy the uniform I want. I could get the nice shirt, the nice dress I want. I could get I could get a chicken in the bag from Dirties if I want to. I could go to Mucka Mucks and get a nice shirt because I figured out how to use my body and my wiles. My feminine wiles now to attract men. I know what to do. And so the spirit begins to train them at an early age. So they find themselves being pole strippers. They find out that they could go to clubs and they dance on the pole and they recognize, you know, I can make a thousand dollars a night just from using my body. And so it goes from there. And from, from there, they begin to what? They begin to now, the guy say, listen, he likes you so much. You look so good. You know, he willing to pay a thousand dollars just to be with you for half hour. So now you don't make a thousand dollars a night. Now this guy want to commission the service on the side. So now you meet him to his hotel and now you begin to deal with him on that level, whereas you begin to sleep with him. And so now what happens is you've entered into the what? The spirit of prostitution. Now Jezebel's spirit, what did I say? She enacted something called sacred prostitution in the temples because the temples and the priests the priests were eunuchs but they would also what go with men the priests and priests uh were what they were dogs they, they call them dogs because of the practice of the sacred prostitution that they did to cleanse one's sin so it, it is called the sacred and the profane so they would be doing all this worship and all this praise and yet they would go sleep with this man and woman when you paid it the temple fee and so they would have sex with you and it's considered a purging of your sins. And so you'd leave a coin there and leave a tip there and they would consider their sins are forgiven you. You see how, how perverted they were? It was a pagan, a mystery religion uh, type of deal. Now in the book, in the Old Testament, we're dealing with the woman of Jezebel. We're dealing with the spirit of Jezebel. And so it is 950 years later in the New Testament that God himself, Christ himself, is telling the church of Tyatira, I have this against you. You're doing good works. You're doing excellent. But you are tolerating this woman who calls herself a Jezebel. And I've told her to repent. And she's not. She's unrepentant. And I will throw her on a sick bed. And I will kill her children. Because she's teaching my servants to commit fornication and eat things. Sacrifice the idol. It's in Acts chapter, Acts chapter 2. Okay. So again, in... in 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 the old testament we're dealing with the woman <laughs> okay she's a physical person but that spirit in the in uh that person that's uh the, in the new in the new testament in the book of acts it is a spirit okay in the old in the old testament we dealt with pharaoh pharaoh was real he was touchable but in the new testament he is what the spirit of egypt pharaoh represents bondage in babylonia and babylon it was it was what the, the children who captured it and it, it was a what it was a spirit babylon is a physical place but in the new testament it is a spirit again the spirit of babylon you know it's a spirit of captivity it's a spirit of of, of, of incarceration and it's a spirit of padlocking all right they padlock you and they keep you captives and yes yes in babylon they were worshiping estate and she had something called the hanging gardens of babylon it is the seventh wonder of the world. People would come from all around the world to see her gardens. With, with, with Nebuchadnezzar and Nebuchadnezzar and all them. In Greece, she was known as Artemis. Artemis, And people would come from all around the world to see her, her, uh, her, her temples. Her temples were renowned uh, and beautiful. Uh, yeah, but yet she had sacred prostitutions. Sacred prostitutes, sorry. In Greece, so in every culture and every nation, there is a different name for the same spirit of Jezebel. And she was known in 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 uh in um she was known uh in Greece too as Diana. Diana, same thing. She what she was a child of the wild. She liked she liked she liked the dare, she liked the fawn, she like she was a huntress, she was the god of vegetation, she was wild and she had an arrow and 
and and what have you so she ran wild and and uh and she would she would she would she would take care of babies and children and she was a patron patron protectors of of of, of the female divine feminine but ishtar was also known as mother earth or gaia there's going to be a strong revival and the environmental movement is what's going to come and bring the mark of the beast in. The mark of the beast is going to come through the environmental movement because they're going to say, you need to be safe and you need to get this mark. You need to get this thing. You need to wear your mask. You need to do this because why? The environment is sick. Mother Gaia, Mother Earth is crying. Mother Earth is, she's vomiting and she's sending out this disease because she's she need cleansing. And so they, they're going to promote the same thing again. And they've already been doing it. It's called the Burning Man, uh, the Burning Man celebration and the Burning Man event they have. And it is also known as the care of cremation at the Bahamian Groves, where they have a 40-foot owl. Uh, they burn and all the uh, VIPs and, and who and, and uh, you know the, the who's who of, of the success world and celebrity world comes there and they begin to um, have homosexual relationship with men and they could be who they want to be for that day uh once they uh once they you know get with this uh with this sabelle or minerva now the goddess minerva is the one who is the goddess of the owl okay now the owl symbolizes complete and utter rotation of movements in other words it can see almost 360 degrees because of the rotation of the owl you can see also in the dark, so it has occult knowledge. Wow, Dr. Sandra said that's a program on Facebook, and they know they're doing. You know, they know they're doing. They're naming it after these things. That's why they're naming a lot of these programs and you know these things after what? After these goddesses, Starbucks with the mermaid and the and the, uh, uh, you know and the, and the, the those those things they put on the cup. You know, those sirens. Those are those are. Those are those are uh, spirits that attract people to come in. This spirit goes out and bring the people in. So you can't you taste Starbucks now. You can't get out. You you gotta have the Starbucks. Why? Because it's a spirit that's driving it. It's a spirit behind it because they know they know the occult the occult involvement of how to how to hypnotize people on a on a mass level, on a mass level. They hypnotize you, and they they begin to invoke a spell by the what the sidlomancy the sigil <laughs> it's called logo magic <laughs> yes it's logo magic and those who know how to do that can can actually have you drawn in that's why ford made saturn there's a call called saturn <laughs> why do you think they don't know what it is because saturn is really another name for satan is one of the planets uh that 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 satan used uh as one of his monikers they have a car called taurus they know Taurus is part of the astrological sign of the bull, Taurus, Orion the hunter. And so, they use something when they want to attack you called the hunter's moon. I know I'm getting off a little course here, guys, but I want to pray. I need to pray. So anyhow, hallelujah. We might have to continue on with this. Thank you, Jesus. Let's pray. Let's, let's pray. I, I think this will be moving on. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for everyone that's on this live. Thank you right now, Father God. Father God, anybody who's practiced Molech worship, abortion, God, anybody who's done ritual sacrifice or Saturn worship, Lord Father God, worshiping Pleiades, the sun, the moon, Orion. God, I come against those things right now, Lord. God, I come against, Father God, any type of, Father God, hidden agenda, Lord. Father God, anybody that worship Pan, Nebo, the Baphomet, unknowingly, Father God, or their family members that worship them, Janus or Sabel, the two-faced God, the God of opening, the God of, of portals, I break it over their life right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, right now, as I cover everyone, Father God, I come against every foul spirit that has caused it. Arrested development through the Jezebel spirit. Jezebel spirit. Anybody who had miscarriage, I command that spirit to go, go, go. Come out, come out, come out. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, anybody who has abortion, abuse, death of a loved one, I command you to go. I break your power, break your grip. Go, out, 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 out. Shock, paralysis from seeing something 
hideous. Go, 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 go. Molestation, they come at you to go. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Emotionally shut down. Possession by trauma. Some people got possessed by trauma. Come out, go, 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 go. Out, 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 out. Every time you take two steps forward, you take ten steps backwards. Come out, out. I break your grip. I break your power. Domestic violence. You witness your mother get beat. Witness your father beating your mother. Witness something horrible. Witness, witness your sister or, or, or brother getting beaten so bad by your, by your dad. Taking out his frustration on him. Taking out his frustration on the child. And you couldn't do nothing about it. Felt helpless. Watch your child get beat from uh, his dad. Watch your, your family members beat your child and you can't do nothing about it. Come out, come out. Witness horrible things. Get out, come out, come out, come out, come out. Maltreatment, bad treatment from family members and loved ones who's supposed to protect you. Come out, domestic violence. Domestic violence, you witness your mother beating your uh, your mother beating your father. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> I know a story where <laughs> this guy said, said his wife used to beat him every night. <coughs> she only weighed like 60, 80 pounds. <laughs> so every night, some people think he was doing good. So every night she used to beat me. So I got tired of it. I give all the businesses, I give all the cars, I give everything, and I went and live in an apartment. By myself. I said, why? He said, because I couldn't take it. I was just tired of her. And I just moved out. <laughs> she used to beat me every night. And and she was a small lady because I did some spraying for them. I said, you, yeah, you sure? She said, yeah, she used to beat me every night. I said, why you didn't hit her back? She said, he said, well, I feel like if I hit her, I'll kill her. But she was, she was she's terrible, terrible. Every night she's beat me. <laughs> but he got out of it. And now he's remarried to someone who loves him and understands him. Displacement of family. Natural disaster. Natural disaster like Dorian, displacement of family, displacement of job. How are you going to make it? How things can happen? Where the finances come in from? I'm in a strange and a strange land. You are away and you someplace far and you feel strange. You feel like, you know, you're all alone. I command that spirit to be broken. Natural disasters, hurricanes. You might have been displaced. You might have had to pick up and leave, moving from another state, moving from another school, keep, keep hopping around. Do you know the vagabond spirit could cost it to you? Always moving from place to place. Can't put down the rules. Can't stay one place. Horrible, horrible memories. Horrible dreams. I break his power over you. I command it to go. Come out. Go. Out. Out. Out in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Get out in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Shame, guilt for something that happened in the past. Come out of them right now. Health challenges. Health challenges. Can't seem to get a grip on the health. Come out right now. Bad accidents. Betrayal. Some people, they've gotten a spiritual trauma through a bad accident. Memories you can't get rid of. Memories you can't uh, seem to break. Images come in your mind that you can't seem to get out. Voices keep speaking to you that are not of God. Come out. Go, go, go. Rape, incest, molestation, getting in stuff when you're young. Someone, uh, rape of innocence. I command it to go. Rape of innocence. Someone, they bribe you, tell you they can take good care of you. They give you candy. They bought you stuff. They bought you home. They bought you this. They put you to school. They do this for you. Come out. Come out. Come out of them. Come out of them. Come out of them. But they use that to manipulate you. Uh, but they, they manipulate your innocence. Come out. Go, 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 go. Traumatic childhood experiences. Horrible things you shouldn't have witnessed as a child, but you saw it anyhow and it scarred your mind. Physical abuse, physical abuse, mental abuse, psychological abuse, emotional abuse, incest, incest, incest. Your dad slept at you, dad slept at you, your cousin slept at you, your, your brother slept at you. Hallelujah, Lord. Get out, come out, come out, come out, come out, release them now, release them now, release them now. Come out, come out, come out, come out. Divorce could be traumatic, divorce, horrible divorce, hideous divorce, bad treatment in the marriage. Your ex who, <clears throat> your ex who put a hex on you. Come out, come out, come out, come out. In the name of Jesus Christ, your ex who put a hex on you. So you can't move forward, can't move on. Yes, you keep seeing your ex in your dream. Keep coming to your dream. Keep fighting you. Keep trying to lock things down. The ex who put a hex on you. I bind it and break its power right now over you. Emotional neglect. The spirit of neglect. I bind you. Break your grip. Break your power. Break your, your hold. Come out now. Come out now. Come out now. Come out now out of them. In the name of Jesus Christ, of have Loss of, of loved one, bereavement, can't get out of a bereaving situation, bereaving for someone from the past. Come out, come out, come out now, come out now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nadrid. Now you gotta say, come out, you gotta say, come out, say, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Come out, come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. Come out, come out, unstable lifestyle, poverty lifestyle, shame of your shame of your of your lifestyle because of what's happening. You can't tell nobody what you're going through. Shame of what happened to you and, and your life. Shame that you went through, hurt that you went through, hurt of a loved one. Hurt of a death of a child that you love. Come on, release it now. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Come on. Out, 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 out. Kidnapping. You kidnap. You watch your mother get raped in front of you. Come on now. Come on now. Out, 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 out. Home invasion. You were robbed. Beaten in your house. Kidnapped. Tied up. Uh, 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 told they were going to kill you. Gun pointed at your head. Come on. Get out. Get out. out. Police brutality. Police brutality. Police who hurt you. Police who targeted you. Being targeted. Being picked on. Bully in school, bully in the home, bully in the church, 
Bully in your ministry. Bully, 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 bully on your job. Come on. Out, out, out. That's traumatic. Come out. Come out. Come out of them now. Get out. Come out. Come out. Come out now. Come out now. Bully in your marriage. Husband. The wife. The wife bullying the husband. The children bullying both the parents. The children have the children in fear. Come out now. Come out now. I know a guy who couldn't get his way with his mother. He had a drug habit. He turned around and killed his mother for the drug money and barrier in the backyard. Come out. Come out. Come out. Get out. Get out. Get out now. Come out now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nadrin. I need to go, 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 go. Negative mental images that are playing in your mind. Negative mindset, negative images. You try to stop it, but it keeps playing over from a traumatic event. Something that happened in the past. You don't even understand. Sometimes it has come in your mind. Hallelujah. You can't seem to get over this thing. Subconsciously, it's been, it's been, it's been imprinted on your mind. I command those demons that are associated with it. The Jezebel spirit that's in you. Come out now. Out, out, out. Up and out, up and out, up and out. Come out now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command suicide, suicide, suicide. Come out, go. I break your power, break your grip. Come out now. Cyberbullying, cyberbullying, social media bullying. Come out now. I know a lady who, she was bullied so much on social media from these girls. She turned around and killed herself. I command that spirit to be broken right now. If you're being bullied <clears throat> on cyber, uh, on, on social media, on cyber, on the cyber world, I command that thing to be broken right now. Cyberbullying. Get out, get out, come out, come out. Go, 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 go. Bipolar, schizophrenia. I command you to go, go, go. Multiple personality syndrome. Get out in the name of Jesus Christ. Of, of obsessive compulsive syndrome. Come out, go. I break your grip, break your power, and the demon associated with, with the trauma at the place where it happened in childhood or that situation where it turned you into a spiritual Stockholm syndrome person where you are now in an abusive relationship and you can't get out of the relationship and the person has hold on you. Come out now, adrenal fatigue. Adrenal fatigue. Come out. I break your grip. Break your power. Chronic fatigue. Weariness. That's a sign. Guys, when you see you sleep 20 hours and 18 hours and you still feel tired, that's a sign that your adrenal, your adrenal glands, your adrenal glands, your pituitary glands, and your body is in the flight or fight mode. I command the flight or fight mode that your body is operating in to be broken right now. I speak peace to your system. Peace to uh, your system. I command divine homeostasis in your body right now. Come on now. Body regulate. I command equilibrium. I command equilibrium, integrity, balance, alignment, structure, zeal. Come forth in your body right now. Disease, the disease, uh, lupus as a result of a result of bitterness and self hatred. Come out now. Come out now. Lupus, 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 cancer, cancer, bone disease as a result as a result of bitterness. Come out now. I break your granular problems, thyroid and granular problems, obesity problems. Come out now. I break your grip. Break your grip. Out in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Out, 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 out. I hate me. I hate me. That's why I can get fat and put on weight. If you've said that in yourself. If you've said it to yourself, that's why I get fat and big. That's why I eat all this food because I don't. I want to seem ugly. Spirit of ugly. I bind the spirit of ugly. The spirit of ugly so nobody will mess with you. And as, as a psychological, subconscious sabotaging of yourself. I break the power of ugly. Come on, ugly. Spirit of ugly. Because you feel ugly on the inside because of what was done to you. When you look in the mirror, you see an ugly person looking back at you. No matter how good they tell you you look. No matter how beautiful they tell you are. You still feel ugly. You still feel unworthy. Sense of hopelessness. Listlessness. Sense of despair. Sense of... Of, of not feel like you can accomplish anything, feel like you're not getting you're not getting by. One minute you're fine, next minute you're down, one minute you're high, one minute you're low, one minute you're happy, next minute you're crying. I break your grip, break your power. Demon, come out, demon, come out, come out, come out, come out. I want you to exhale, I want you to exhale, I want you to breathe out, breathe out, breathe out, expel it, expel it. I command you right now, diabetes, insulin imbalance. Come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. Painful traumatic birth. Painful traumatic birth. You had a you had a traumatic birth. You had a, a horrible birth. You were hanging between life and death. Your child was hanging between life and death. Anything that connected got in as a result of the womb. Womb death syndrome. Come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. Warm curses, curses in the womb. Come out, feeling of alienation, feeling of hopelessness, feeling like you want to give up, feeling of depression, feeling of despair. Notice I say feeling because it's not you. I command that thing to be broken right now. Hallelujah. Depression, depression, rejection from a relationship, rejection from a person, rejection from your mother, rejection from your father, rejection from your sibling, rejection from the school, rejection from your church, rejection from people where you go. Come out now, release them now. Come out, release them now. Come out, come out, come out, come out now. Anybody that painted you as a target in the spirit with rejection, I break your grip, break your power. Come on now, come on, come on, come on, come on now. Loose them now, loose them now, loose them in the spirit. Any, any demonic a spirit that is attached to these demons, I command you to be broken now, be broken now. Come on, come on, come out now. Inability to finish things, inability to, to complete projects, jumping from place to place. Come on now, come on now, come on now, come on now. I break your grip, break your power. 
Ah, hallelujah. The spirit doesn't want you to put down root. Doesn't want you to put down root. Hallelujah. Doesn't want you to prosper. Doesn't want you to prosper. I command you to come out. Come out. Out. Up and out. Up and out. I break your grip. Break your power. Break your I break your grip. Break your power. Come on. Spirit of remorse. Spirit of remorse. I break your grip and I break your power. Come out now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nathan. Come out now. Relationship abuse. Relationship abuse. Come out now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I break you right now. I break your assignment that came in to someone listening to me. You came in and you set up shop, right? You set up shop and you develop a stronghold in their mind and you 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 try to make them feel like that's how it is, but they know something is wrong. Subconscious death wish. Some people have a subconscious death wish. I command that spirit agreement, that agreement with an unconscious agreement with the spirit of death. I command you to get out, get out, get out. Get out, get out, get out now. Get out now. Fear of failure, fear of success, fear of feeling you're worth it. People who told you you're worthless, you're useless, you're nobody. I command that. I I told you you're useless, you're wicked, you're nobody, you're a loser. I command that thing to be broken. Teachers that spoke words of you who in authority and you thought that it was you thought they were right because they were teachers. You believe a lie. Even even your church members who begin to prosecute you, who's supposed to love you and, and they, they hurt you so bad. Hallelujah. Release them and let them go. <clears throat> Release them and let them go. Release them and let them go. Anybody who's a freak, who's a who's a uh, control freak, control freak, want to control everything, want to control Everything that that you're doing, want to control the environment, the way you the way you eat, the way you sleep, how you live. That spirit is a demon. I bind that demon right now. Come on, go, 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 go. Anxious, depressed, and somatic indifference, insomnia. I break the grip of insomnia, sleeplessness, sleeplessness, sleep deprivation. Come out now. I break your grip. I break your grip. Occult involvement. If you've been involved in the cult in any way, shape, or form, it could have been 30, 40 years ago. You need to ask God forgiveness. I release you from this right now. Come out right now. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. You have mental problems, thought problems. You have uh, you have problems concentrating. Fo foggy mind. Foggy mind. Foggy mind. Foggy thoughts. Inability to uh, to focus on things long. Attention deficit syndrome. I break the power. Break the grip right now. Come on now. Come on right now. Come on right now. I bind you right now. Checks. Uh, uh, sorry. Hexes. Charms. Vexes. Evil incantations. Evil dreams. Nightmares that are so terrible. Paralysis in the dream. Sleep paralysis. Horrible dreams. Horrible mind images. Come on now. I break your grip. I break your grip. Ungodly soul ties that are working against you even now. That are pulling you back because the demon associated with that evil soul ties fighting your present condition right now. And keeping you in the past by, by running and chasing people who are supposed to help you or marry you. I command a spirit of racism. Racism. That spirit of racism. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Over aggressive uh, person. Get out of here. What, what I call thin skin, you thin skin, thin skin, can't crack a joke, can't take a joke. The minute someone cracks a joke with you or say something, you take it out of proportion and you read so much into it and, and it's not that serious. I bind a spirit right now, the spirit of, of isolation, isolation, you isolated, can't talk to the body, can't think properly. I command you, complaining spirit, come on, come on, come on, mind blockages, mind battle. I break your grip, break your power, can't focus, can't think, God has forgiven you, God has erased it. Even as I'm speaking, this thing is being broken over you. I break the power, break the grip, I lose this. I lose this hold upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ. I've never come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Iniquity, fear of success, fear of failure, fear of people. Come on now. I break your grip, fear of elevators. Fear of elevators, fear to drive, fear to walk, fear to go outside. I command that problem to go. Suicidal thoughts. Get out, get out, get out. Voices speaking in your head. Mind voices speaking in your head. Come out, come out, come out. Shame, 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 shameful of parents' behavior. Have you had a parent? You were just shameful of their behavior. They come to your school drunk. They come and they carry on bad. They come and beat you in the school. Have you ever witnessed something like that? Where your parent come and you are adolescent and they come and they beat you in the school. They beat you or they embarrass you and you've never forgotten it. And it's been something where you always have to apologize for your mother or father. You have, you'd have witnessed them fighting. You'd witness people beating uh, your, your, your parents or they're always fighting away on some drama. Or you witness like... People always fighting you wherever you go. They fighting you. Some come on your job to fight you. Some come to fight you for no reason for misunderstanding and drama. And and you say and I say that spirit is a is a demon that is somehow connected you. Can't break alcohol because of the alcohol dependence. Have you have you ever had to take uh, your your parents alcohol or? throw it away you're the throw away the alcohol throw away the drugs throw away the dope. You live with someone who is in and out of prison, and they're stealing from the house, taking things from the house. Dramatic. They stealing the 
Silly, you're a house and a home because of the drug spirit, because of the because of uh, uh, the alcoholic spirit. They're putting a burden on the family. They're putting a burden on you. They come home drunk. They, once they're not drunk, they're okay. The minute they get drunk, they fight you and beat you. And then in the morning, they can't remember it. Then they turn on and buy you a gift. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You find now you're doing to you're doing you're doing things that are unhealthy to cope with it. You're doing toxic. You find toxic coping mechanisms. You're involved in things you don't want to be involved in. You find yourself. Uh, just to appease yourself and to ease situation you find yourself doing things you don't even want to do but it's a way to cope it is a way to get out of that situation you find yourself looking at things you shouldn't look at memory loss foggy memory family poverty that could bring you into so much sickness and also it could play a big part in your life you could even be so driven to the point where you can't even enjoy yourself you say i will never be poor again but you have a drivenness you're driven 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 you can't even enjoy the fruits of your living because you figure you can go back to your situation where you poor or you broke again toxic environment toxic atmosphere living with people sleeping on the couch sleeping in people's house sleeping in old homes sleeping in foster homes sleeping in foster care homes being tossed about being tossed about and also go through a bunch of bad relationships bad relationships till you give up on relationships are you even contemplating going gay or turning into a lesbian or whatever the case may be accumulation of trauma over a period of time you've been badly hurt i command a thing to be broken right now in the name of jesus christ of nazareth i break the power i break the grip i loose you right now in the name of jesus christ of nazareth this man was saying you know he was was 50 years old and he's wondering why he had prostate cancer and he was dealing with sickness and prostate cancer and he couldn't figure out why and so as he began to go for deliveries and get therapy uh he wrecked he, his, his mind had blocked out what had happened his his uh his boy scout master would would molest him and bribe him not to talk about it and so he kept that in because of the shame and the guilt because here it is he's been sent to go to boy scout and to learn something and he's been raped by his scoutmaster and so he kept that thing in for for 50 years and it caused them to have severe prostate but when he confronted it and dealt with it and forgive the person and release it and call it out the the prostate condition and the and the cancer left so we know that these things are real now i want you guys to take a deep breath i want you to yawn i want you to uh, to release people even if they're not there i want you to picture them picture them in your mind that you're talking to them and you're saying, you know, I know what you did to me is wrong. You, what you did to me is wrong. And I was small and young, and 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 I and I I, I you didn't have a right to do that to me. And 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 I I uh, I forgive you and I release you. But what you did was wrong to me. And you say that, and you say it with passion. You say it like you mean it. And then God will do the rest. You just say, I forgive you. I release you. And I I I I don't hold this against you. But I'm not gonna allow you to control my life, whether whether it's conscious or unconscious. And I know you might have been abused, and you might have been used. So you are only doing what you've been uh, 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 exposed to. And again, I say wounded people hurt people, and because they went through stuff themselves, don't hold them accountable. Re release them, uh, release them. Okay, release them. Let them go. So you might be dealing with someone who have. They, they've been off drugs, but they did not relapse. Have you ever had someone who they're doing good and they relapse back on the cocaine or drug meds or prescription meds or Valium or meth or whatever it is they're taking, oxycodone, oxytin, whatever, but they relapse back and now it's taking a drain on you, it's causing problems. I decree and declare if your child is on drugs, if your child is uh, hanging with the wrong crowd, I pray over them right now that you will take the taste of this cocaine out of their mouth amen you might have experienced the death of a beloved pet yes a pet that you love so much you might have witnessed him die or witnessed him get knocked down yes that's traumatic yes a beloved pet or beloved bird or beloved fish whatever it is you might have seen this happen okay and so some people didn't recognize they were dedicated to the enemy from birth you might have had an occultic dedication you don't even know you're dedicated to an occultic organization or force from birth and and so your life has been one that's been playing out in certain ways and you say my life is a strange life why does i why do i see myself going to these places and doing these things because they've done something and what happened is when you've been under this trauma traumatization and this victimization in the spiritual realm it does something to your immunosuppression system the immune the 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 uh the uh, your immunity what do you call it immunology immunity what do you call it immuno system sorry your immuno system now begins to fight against your body cells and so what happens a lot of people as a result of this develop something called leaky gut the leaky gut now begins to work against them and begins to fight them so they find themselves dealing with leaky gut 
All right, and so the parasites and the spirits that have been attached now begin to operate and work out in the physical. So they find out that the toxic emotions, toxic situations created a condition called leaky gut and inflammation. Inflammation is caused by the arrested development of the suppression of the amino the amino glands. It suppresses that, and so it'll have your immune your immune system fighting. 24 7 you don't get no rest in your body and in your system so they're fighting the strawberry that you eat they're fighting the food you eat and so it is now in a high state of alert so your fight or flight system is working 24 7 and you f why so tired why why I feel weary because a demon spirit that's entered into your body can sit on those things they sit on portions of your brain they sit on the, the front and low portion of your brain how you how we know because after we do deliverance and we cast some things out they have perfect eyesight, perfect memory. They have perfect recall. They can actually begin to get their healing in their back. Sometimes you got an accident. You fell down on your back or hurt your back and it was traumatic, right? And you went home in a weakened state. But while you were home, that demon that was around who actually uh, uh, was watching and waiting and looking for a way entered in through trauma and pain. Yes, there's a demon known as pain. So Father, right now we command pain to Spirit of infirmity, spirit of affliction. Come out now, come out now, come out now. Obesity, shame for being called fat. You were in school and they call you fat so big. There's uh, fat girls, I, fat girls don't sweat. Fat girls this, fat that, 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 that. Remember that? You shame because you're fat. You shame because you had a different ethnicity. You shame that you came from a, a different uh, country and they, 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 they tease you about it. I break that grip. I break that grip. I break that grip of you right now. And any emotional triggers that have been uh, uh, triggering these things over your life, liver disease, lung disease, heart problems, strokes, prostrate, I command you to go. Someone who has, uh, you have distrust, suspicion, paranoia, you don't trust nobody because you don't let nobody close to you because you had to, you had to cope, you had to develop coping mechanism. You were a child, you had no, you had nothing to protect you, so you develop ways to protect yourself. You develop walls around yourself, but now the walls are, uh, are keeping in these toxic emotions that's piling up. There's blockages, there's barriers, and now the wall that was the demon now has built a stronghold and used that wall. That's why imaginary friends come in because they want to help because because they know by helping you in a sense they are now going to get control of your body, mind, will, and emotions, and they're going to get in you and they're going to set up shop as a stronghold. Amen. Strongholds operate in the mind and then they begin to whisper and build a monolith and they begin to control the rest of your body through these things and that's what jezebel do jezebel have legions and legions of, of soldiers that are in the body in the church in the mind in the world that is looking for a way to gain access to you and so right now we command every single demon to come out and you know how you know the woman picked up the uh, picked up the, uh, the jezebel spirit the jezebel spirit said it made her to watch a program on TV where they was having a late night advertisement of a Tibetan prayer wheel. And it told her that she would cleanse her house and she will have good, good success if she get the Tibetan prayer wheel that she saw on the internet. She ordered the Tibetan wheel, uh, 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 Tibetan prayer wheel. And, put, and that's when all the possession took place. They made her to buy dream catches, occultic tarot cards. They go to psychics. Why? They were opening up to more spirits. All this was done on the internet, guys. All right? So be very careful. Anything your eyes have looked to that's not of God, I command it to be broken right now. I command it to be broken right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command that spirit right now that has messed with you, abused you, that has used you, that has played with you. I command that thing to go, 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 go. Spirit of intimidation, spirit of fear, spirit of threats, spirit of domination, rebellion, lying, anger, control, lust, rumor spreading. Yes, rumor spreading, gossip mongering, lying, spiritual elitism religious spirit jealousy strife i command a thing to be broken right now come on come on come on come on fake concern fake concern fake concern fake concern fake concern judging judgmental critical critical of people critical of things i command a spirit to be broken right now i break your grip i break your power come on now come on now come on now 
Come on now. I release a wall of fire around everyone who's watching. Everyone who's watching. Everyone who's listening under the sound of my voice. If you guys have not shared this, I need you to share it. Because, again, like I say, the AI algorithms look like it, it has some sort of thing. So I need you guys to share it at least 20 times if you can. Share each one of you. Share it 20 times, please. Jandus, jandus, spirit of jandus, chronic depression, liver, hepatitis. I command you to go. I command you to go. Irritable barrel syndrome. Go, 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 go. Flashbacks, hot flashes, uh, uh, Bell's palsy, Bell's palsy. Someone who can't uh, sustain employment. You work for a little while and they fire you. You work for a little while again, they fire you. You work for a little while and they fire you. They keep doing it. You keep doing it because it is shown because things that happened in your childhood is now still playing. It's like a record playing. I erased the record. Yes, you saved. You love the Lord and you love him and you, you give him all, but there's some things you know ain't right. I command that bullying spirit, that spirit of the bully. Jezebel is a bully. I command that spirit to be broken. Get out, get out, get out. Your mother who slap you, swear at you. Your parent who swear at you. Anger, push you around, beat you, grab you, touch you inappropriately. Uh, oral sex. But it came in. Get out. 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 I command the spirit to go. Come out now. 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 Ribi kala basi loboku rebe ba raba liba ba ba raba ba 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 raba ba. Spiritual amnesia. Amnesia. When we doing deliverance and we pray for people, sometimes they can't even remember what was happening in their childhood. And after we pray, they say, you know, prophet, I now remember what happened. So and so and so and so, and I can see it now, and I can dream again. That's because those things were sitting on their dream life, sitting on their the recall centers of their mind. I command you to go, 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 go. Mind blankness, mind double mindedness. Come on now, forgetfulness. Go, 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 go. Hatred. You just find yourself hating things and yeah, critical and mean sometimes and guilty. Uh, I don't even like you. I don't know why I like you. Victim binds it. Victim mindset. I command a victim mindset to go. You are not a victim. You are a victor. You are more than a conqueror. You are highly loved by God. It's not your fault what happened. Some of those things would happen in your childhood. You had no coping mechanism. And you feel guilty for bribery. They might have bribed you with candy. They might have bribed you with, with things, okay, to keep you silent. Any vow of silence. Vow of silence. Bribery by silence. I'll get in trouble if you tell. I'll get in trouble if you talk. I decree those things that hold you, spirit of intimidation. If you talk, I'll deal with you. If you talk, I'll mash you up. If you talk, I'll kill you. That spirit has even passed on. They're dead now and might have been gone. They might even be far away, but the spirit still has you in fear. I command that spirit to loose you now. De the demons that are associated with you. Come on now. Go, 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 go. Hard is a hard. You have a hard. Hard is a hard because of what happened. Get out, get out, get out, get out. Hopelessness. Pride, 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 because you've developed a spirit of pride now because of what happened now. That's a coping mechanism. So you develop pride as a wall to protect yourself. Boastfulness, boastfulness, boastfulness. Come out, rejection, go, rejection, go. I bind you, rejection. I burst, I burst your bubble, rejection. Come out, go, 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 go. go. Spirit of secrecy, come out now, come out now, come out now. Get out now, spirit of secrecy. So you can never tell anyone, it's just our secret. So it'll be a thing you carry to your grave. Spirit of shame. Spirit of not feeling like you measured up. You never felt that you measured up. You never felt that you were good enough. You never felt that you were ever measured up. You felt that you always had to jump through hoop to, to get attention and to get love. You never felt like you was loved. You had to be performance based so you would get A's, all A's, all A's so they could love you. And they still never love you the way you should have been loved. You try to be a perfect child. You even try to be a people pleaser. You try to be a people pleaser, do everything they want right. Hallelujah, Lord. Everything they want right, just to stop, just to love you, just to appreciate you, just to stop the punishment, just to stop talking to you bad. You did those things because you wanted to You wanted to have love, but they only polluted on you and dumped on you. I break the power, break the, uh, break the grip, which caused you to have self-condemnation, self-condemnation, self-hatred, burden, false fear, false flag, self-hatred, self-pity. I command a thing to go, 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 go. Forgive them now. Release them and forgive them. Very important. Forgive them and loose them and let them go. Forgive them, forgive them, forgive them now. Forgive them. You hear me? Call their names and forgive them. Forgive them. Come out now. Come out now. Come out now. Rage. Rage. You feel rage. You don't even know why you feel rage. You feel anger. Sometimes you feel like you could just chop somebody's head off. You feel if they say something to you, you could just jug them. You feel like you go over and get your gun and shoot them up. You feel like if they say one more word to me, if they play with me, they look at me funny, I'll go and punch them in the mouth. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on now. Come on now. This little girl says she 
she was uh she was uh she didn't know why but she was looking at people that feel like killing them she didn't even know why and she was seven how you could be seven and you will kill people cut their head off you will murder them why is you driving with your mother you feel like taking the wheel and running off the bridge running into the wall where did that come from when they did the deliverance on her they find out that that there was a spirit of murder operating in a family line her family her family members had killed like seven people you hear me seven or eight people they'd kill and so that spirit entered into her life and now she was manifesting and acting strange and acting weird and, and and being possessed because of what the spirit that came down through her and she only seven years old i command that spirit to go that wants you to feel shame shame fear of retribution fear of retaliation fear of backlash yes fear of backlash uh, yes yes yeah jezebel loved the backlash jezebel loved the backlash Jezebel love to fight. Jezebel love to come at you and tell you I can get you. Watch your back. You already know I can come at you because she will fear in you. Spirit of the grave. Spirit of coercion. I command you to go, 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 go. Get out. Spirit of abandonment. Spirit of abandonment. Fear of failure. Fear of failure. Fear of losing the business. Come out now. Fragmented soul. I command your spirit to come back to you wherever it's been locked down. Spirit of apathy. Lethargy. Laziness. I command a spirit of go. The Walter Bitty syndrome, living in fantasy, living in Wonderland, living in living in, in uh, 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 escapism, escapism. Come out now, come out now, come out now, come out now. Anger, anger, rage. I keep hitting on this anger because someone is dealing with this sarcasm, hostility, criticizing. Come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. A criticizing spirit. You criticize everything. Can't trust nobody. Can't trust nobody. Can't develop no relationship. You can't trust nobody enough to allow them in because you're afraid they're going to hurt you because you know that you've been wounded so bad that everybody else now suspect. You think the chicken won't hurt you, the dog won't hurt you. You think the man down there who's looking at you when do something to you because of what has happened to you. I command a stronghold of death to lose you. Death, hell, and the grave, go. Abortion, go. Go, go, go. Aggression, go. Violence, go. Confusion, go. Get out, get out. Get out of them right now. Come out now. Come out now. Come out now. Come out now. I break your grip. Break your power. Break your evil structures. Evil loads. Evil deposits. Come out. Come out. Pseudo masochism. That is the spirit when you just think about doing wicked things uh, in a sexually perverse way. Sexually perverse. Come out now. Come out now. Narcissistic. Narcissist. You have a narcissistic tendency, a sociopathic tendency. You have a selfish streak about you. You attract selfish people. People are narcissistic, self-centered. You're the mother who is self-centered. All she would do is think about herself, go to the club, dress up, leave you alone, leave you by your skate, leave you by yourself. And so you have to fend for yourself, do things. You have to, you have to be big for, uh, for yourself, but you should have been nurtured. Amen? Pedophilia, pedophilia, bestiality. Come out now. Come out now. I command everything that suppress you. Dominatrix. Domination. Come out now, come out now. I break your I break your grip. Voyeurism, voyeurism, pornography, surfing, surfing for porno sites. Get out, get out, get out, get out. Come out now. Come out now. I bind your grip. Clinginess. Clinginess. I have to cling with you. Codependency. That codependent spirit. Clinginess. I break your grip and break your power. Cruelty. Cruelty. I command a cruel spirit. Come out now. Hoarding spirit. Hoarding spirit. You never feel like you have enough because you suffered poverty, lack, scarcity. Back in the day, so you hoard things and hold on to things because of what happened. I break the I break the grip. I break his power over you right now. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Cutting self, self-mutilation. I command you to go overeating, eating junk food, addicted to coke, addicted to soda, addicted to coke, addicted to soft drinks that have so much uh, uh, caffeine and so much additives and preservatives in it that is keeping you fat and big. I command the thing to go. Poor self-control. Poor self hygiene. I commanded to go. Get out, get out, get out now. Come out now, come out now, come out now. Stupid spirit, spirit of stupid. Yes, that spirit that wants you to be stupid, that wants you to make mistakes, and wants you to tell you you're stupid, whispering to you you're stupid, you lose it, you make mistakes, you mess up, your business can fail, your life can fail, you can't do nothing right. What you living for, you might as well die. You're wasting your father's sperm. Get out, get out, get out, your father's spirit. Get out, get out, get out, get out. Come out, come out now. I break your grip. Worthless spirit, spirit that makes you want to feel worthless. It ain't you so much as the spirit that's living in you. It's a worthless spirit. And so once it begins to take up residence in you, you begin to feel like that because you're feeling like it. it's like you feel it, but it's actually the spirit that's been attached to you, uh, that that is that you picked up, all right, or that has come on you at a certain time or age, and now it is like it's getting stronger. You have to get out. That's why I'm telling you guys do this. Get out right now. Rejection. Rejection. I bind you right now. Divorce. Separation. I command you to go. Asperger syndrome. Come out now. Come out now. Come out now. 
come out of anything that's been triggering it, anything that's been fighting it, anything that's been causing you to be like that. I command it to be broken. I break your power. I break your grip. I loose you right now. Come out right now. Fire all of you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nadrim. Come out right now. Anything that's been making you, hallelujah, fight you, fight your business, fight your uh, your ministry, fight your life, fight your thoughts, spirit of poverty, spirit of lack, scarcity. Come out now. I break your grip. Emotional, emotional abuse, mental abuse, psychological abuse, mental games, mind games that you've encountered with a narcissist, a narcissistic person, demon-possessed person who's operated under the office of a narcissist, narcissistic, self-centered, wicked people that will play you, take you to the cleaners, use you, and then dump you. I command that spirit to be broken right now. You spend money on them, clean up their act, get them sorted out. You, in essence, fattening frog for snake. Uh, I command that spirit to be broken. You will not build up people, help them, do all this for them. And then they turn around and treat you like a dog and also turn around and leave you. You take a guy, get him together, you get him cleaned up, fix him up, get him going. And then he turn around and leave you when he gets on his good foot. Go to another lady and then mess you up. I command that spirit to be broken. I command that spirit to go. I command any mental illness, mind battles, mind uh, 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 control demons, mind binding demons, mind occult demons. I command it to be broken right now. Spirit of the cockatrice, mind blinding, mind binding. Come out now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command you to loose them now. Loose you now. Loose you now. Spirit of the python that's been holding on to you. Go, 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 go. Break your grip. Break your grip. Generational curse. Generational curses. I command you to go. Spirit of the firstborn. Spirit of the firstborn. Curse of the firstborn, I break your grip, break your power. I break your grip, break your power. Come out, spirit of the firstborn. Curse of the firstborn, I break your grip. You will not serve your youngest. You will not serve, you will not serve your, your lesser brothers. I command that spirit to go, 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 go. Where you have sibling rivalry, sibling rivalry. You cannot seem to see eye and eye with your sibling. I command that thing to be broken right now. I command it to loose you now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Bless them right now, Father God. Every prayer that was prayed right now, we seal it up with the blood. We decree this thing is broken forever in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I release, Father God, walls of fire according to uh, Zechariah 2. Yes, Lord, I release the walls of fire around us right now in the name of Jesus. I command arrested development in your business, in your life, in your endeavors, in your goals, in your mind, in your emotions, in your will, wherever you've been hijacked. Wherever it is, I command you to be healed and to be delivered and to be set free. And I command the root, the shoot, the plant, the leaf, wherever it is, saplings, whatever it is, saplings, anything that's auto reconnecting, anything that has been keeping you in a state of perpetual bondage. I command a spirit of dysfunction to be broken. And I command you to get out right now, get out right now, get out right now. Spirit of backlash, whiplash, cut attack. I command you to be broken right now. I command you to be broken. You shall not uh, attack or counterattack the people of God in the name of Jesus Christ, including myself right now. And I break your power in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Any Jezebel spirit that's been causing any mental problems, mind battles, mind emotions, keeping you in a state of perpetual fear, fear demons, fear demons, phobos, phobia, come out in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Anxiety, panic. Panic. You run when you're sitting down. You you not you can't be comfortable. You have a spirit of discomfort no matter what you're doing. You cannot relax. You find it hard to relax. So your body is being stressed out. Stress, 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 stress. That's opened you up to, uh, to chemicals that are now going to be fighting your body. Cortisol, that's for fight or flight, but it's going now in your body and causing your body to have inflammation and, and problems and it's opening up you to disease. Spirit of claustrophobia, claustrophobia. Claustrophobia, agoraphobia. I command those spirits to be broken over your life permanently and forever in the name of Jesus Christ. Struggle of shame. I command you, go, go. Spirit of sorrow, sorrow and woes and sadness. It shall not be a portion. Spirit of scorn and disgust. Hopelessness. I command you to go. Break, break, break. Out, 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 out. Spirit of submission. Somebody who is submission, uh, submitting you to their evil agendas. I command you to go. Break, 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 break. I command those person who have lack of feelings for people, lack of emotions. You don't feel nothing for nobody. You are cold and callous. Loss of innocence. Loss of innocence. I command you to go. Loss of concentration. Loss of childhood. You have to do things that no child should do. And you are now living out your childhood. The wounded child in you. Because you had to grow up quick in order to survive. You've been living in survival mode for too long now. I break the grip of that thing. I break the power. I command that thing to go, go. Spiritual concussions. You've been concussed in the realm of the spirit. I command that thing to be broken. Come out, go, go. I break your grip. 
out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I lose your grip in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Spirit of abandonment. They gave you stuff. They gave you stuff. They bought you gifts. They bought you off because they, it wasn't time spent. So they will give you money, give you gifts, but they never spent time with you. They never nurtured you. They never validated you. They never showed you how to be a woman or a man. Hallelujah. You had to learn from the TV, learn from gangs, learn from people at school, and that would taught you. And you found role models that loved you and validated you, but they were evil to the core. And they inducted you into things. They inducted you into smoking grass, smoking weed. They inducted you into your first sexual experience. And now you've had bad sexual encounters, traumatic sexual experience, and turn you off for man or turn you off for woman that you don't want to you don't want to engage in it because it's hideous to you. And I command a thing to be broken over you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And because of that, you've allowed the spirit to give you fibroids, fibroids and painful cycles, menstrual cycles. I command a thing to be broken over you. Get out in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Come out, 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 come out. Evil curses that ministers of the gospel spoke of you. Evil ministers that spoke words of you. Divination prophets. Div uh, divination prophets that spoke. False prophets that spoke evil prophetic words of doom and gloom over you. I command that uh, that word that they spoke of you to fall to the ground. I command those that told you, you if you leave this church you'll never make it. And they curse you when you left. I command that spirit to fall to the ground. I command friendly fire. That friendly fire. See, that's Christian cursing Christians. And that's called friendly fire. That's like when you're in the army and your men, they don't recognize who you are and they begin to fight you as the enemy. That should not be because the kingdom divided against itself can't stand. And Satan's kingdom is not divided against itself. Only we in the body of Christ turn around and we kill one another when we're out. We laugh in order to fall. We fight one another when we're down. We rejoice when people are hurt and pain. No, you shouldn't do that. You should restore that one to their rightful place and pray for them because what you're laughing at, you could be in for fall yourself. You may not fall now. Your secret better be known now, but only the grace of God got you staying where you are. Either that you better, but for, the, but for the grace of God, there go I, is a true saying. Amen? So don't laugh at someone when they fall or when they mess up. Do not do, not do that because that could come at your door. You hear me? Pray for them. Ask God to have mercy upon them. But don't you lambaste them? Don't you la don't you lambaste your leaders? The Lord said we should pray for our leaders. Pray for those in authority over us. And we're not to disrespect them because it's unworthy of us. Amen? And we have to pray for them. God will set up and take down who he wants to set up and take down. And all I can say is that A over yet. Amen? The Lord has the final say. And in this season, I see where God is doing a new thing. Amen? So let the Lord have his way. And let the Lord do what he wants to do. Amen? Hallelujah. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Again, people always ask me how to get the book. We can do it again. <laughs> Here are the book, guys. Here are the books. Breaking Marital Hexes. Here it is. It's on our website. You can find it at streetsoldiers.com. Here it is again, guys. People are always saying, Man of God, and they'll send me messages and put it up and they say how to get the books. This is this is them right here. Okay? This is them right there. You can go to Street Soldiers of Fire and you can buy the books. Alright? Get them. Begin to begin to set yourself free. Here it is again. These are all there. They're loaded, okay? They're loaded with power. They're loaded with prayer. Because I prayed, when I prayed, I fasted over the books. And when I fasten the books, I anointed them and ask God that uh, those who read them, let them be set free and be delivered. Sometimes you don't even need me to pray for you. Just you know the prayers and your intention and your desire to be set free. God will free you up. <laughs> Man, we've had some testimonies of people telling us they got set free from reading the books and applying what we say apply and being intentional, being consistent, persistent, and also they've been what? They've been operating where they begin to look into their family life they begin to fast with it they begin to also clean their life up amen <laughs> clean their life up they begin to live right like i say you can get some blessings you can also get things but the lord is more concerned about your spiritual thermometer he's concerned about your life he's concerned about your relationship to others as well as to him as well as how you treat people amen and so what happened is god will bless you with things again i will tell you this everybody can't handle your blessings 
Everybody can handle a fight that doors open for you. And so I tell you again, when you are being blessed, you're gonna you're gonna encounter people who are not gonna be happy for you. When God is using you, you're gonna you're gonna encounter people who are gonna have a problem with it because they never saw you being used or they have a problem with how God is using you. So this is the season where we're living in where you got to say that's your problem. You go to God about it. <laughs> But I am going to be blessed. I'm going to be debt free. I'm going to be prosperous. I'm going to owe no man nothing but a depth of love. There are some people who can't stand to be blessed. They love their chains. They love their poverty. Some slaves, some people love their chains. Some prisoners love their prison. And so they don't really want to get set free. So you'll find that they are comfortable in their mess. So what you got to do is you got to say, listen, God bless you. Keep moving. I love you. Hope you get clear. Send me 10 people who really want to go. Uh, to the source of, of this problem and get set free and move on to testimony, uh, 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 victory over certain things that had them banned for years. Amen? Things that had them banned for years. We had one lady say, oh, you talk about cars and house too much. And this is what I, I come here for spiritual warfare. I was like, I was so taken aback. I was like, what? What are you talking about? I preach on warfare so much and spiritual warfare and these things, people get angry with me and, you know, don't want... Some of them even want to talk to me because I call it out, <laughs> right? We talk about spiritual warfare. People, I, I am to the, I am, I am of the opinion that people want to see what they want to see. They, they want to see what they want to see, and you can't convince them otherwise. Have you ever been around a person, and you say, "No, I didn't do that, man. That ain't the way it is." But they have already a mental picture and an idea of who you are. They will always, forever, keep you in that box because you say, "No, I, no, man, that's not me." So what you got to do, stop explaining yourself, continue to live on, do what you got to do, because they already have you in that box. As far as they're concerned, you are this way and you're never going to come out. That's why the Bible says, and Jesus could do no mighty miracle in Nazareth. Why? Because the people were too familiar with him. And, and he had to leave. Because why? They, they already see him as Mary's son, the cop and the son, the cop and the boy. Where you get this knowledge from? Where you get this wisdom from? You better, you better go fix that cop, that cabinet we, 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 we said to you. You around here, we know who you are. As a matter of fact, we really show about your birth. You have a strange birth, and then you ain't been to none of our schools. You ain't even been to our cemetery. I'm sorry, seminary. You ain't come there. So how you come? Where you come with this wisdom from? Where you come up with this new knowledge? How you take? It, how you talk about one that's having authority? Huh? How you cast out the demons? We want the demons in our church. We want them there because the demons, them and us, as friends, we make friends with these demons. <laughs> they must come there for thirty years. He is already have a seat in the church. We know him. <laughs> <laughs> so God bless you guys. God bless you. So again, you can find the books on street uh, streets uh, street sources of fire. dot com. They're in a, they're available in ebooks, guys. We're not sending. We're not shipping any books to the U.S. If you're in Freeport, we can get them to you. If you're in Nassau, it's a little iffy because this was going on. All right. So we're not sure because some things are going on. We try to set some things and they try to take it. All right. So. People who, who who remember you from past, they have a problem with you now. That's why familiarity breeds contempt. That's why I believe Satan fell. He got too comfortable with the presence of God. See, he got too he got too comfortable. He forgot who created him because he felt that he could go in and out anytime he wanted to. He covered him all the time. He was a beautiful angel. The angel that was telling him how awesome he is, how magnificent he is, how wonderful he is. After a while, he said, "You know what? Okay, I I I I beg it in God. Let me go start my own church." So he break off and he he get he. He got cast out of heaven. Him and his angels, they're going to start their own church. Their own demonic church. <laughs> That's what that spirit does. It, it just wants to do its own thing. And it is a rebellious spirit. It does not submit. It will not ever, ever, ever submit to you. Amen? Hallelujah. So God bless you. God bless you. And now I am going to get some food. And I will talk to you in the in the next, uh, next teaching. <laughs> Amen? And uh, we really had a good time with those who was on the. We did. A, we actually did a personal, private, um, uh, live. We did it. We did. Um, we did it with Zoom. We did it Zoom for, for those who we invited in. It was personal and it was, it was by invitation only. And man, we had a good time. Amen. We enjoyed that. I enjoyed that. So we're gonna do it again soon. And so we could have. We could rap. We could talk. You know, people get to actually say stuff they wanted to say, and you know. And it was good because I learned some things as well. So it was it was a great experience. Amen. The first time doing it, I don't think I got it right in terms of the buttons and control. <laughs> but again, you know, the testimonies, I am blown away. I was listening to the testimonies and it was so encouraging to hear how uh, one lady told us that, you know, Prophet, you know, 
my daughter now is a, a lawyer and the word you spoke of her life she's now got a phd in law she's a phd in law and she has her own uh, the lord said she's going to get either bmw or a mercedes as a, sort of like a graduation uh, uh present and now she's gotten i think uh, she said the bmw is gone so she ended up getting the mercedes and and i told her you know i told her some things about her daughter how she could finish strong and she's brilliant she said she almost had a perfect score uh in her when she passed the bar exam and got her results back by the mail she was almost perfect in her score so the fame of the lord was on this child for eight years so this young lady who's now only but 26 27 is a doctor because of the word of the lord the word of the lord went forth and brought this child and gave this child what she needed the word of the lord had to come to pass because it was spoken and now god is going to bless this child to the place where she making so much money and funny and it's going to take her even to capitol hill for you god will take you from the pit to the palace god will bless your seed god will bless your offspring that they will supersede you and be a door and a gateway for blessings and increase just like how god uh has raised up a godly line the enemy also tries to raise up a godly line but the lord blessed this child and i was happy to hear the prophetic word that came forth so god is in the blessing business and someone else testify how the lord gave them after they sowed their seed they said man of god not a couple days after that i got to the mail and i got my citizenship papers and he sent me a picture and a copy of the citizenship papers that he had he got right away so he's fully 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 a citizen of the country he's in the lord did that thing speedily amen and so now god is doing that someone say you know man of god i couldn't get no vehicle and it was rough and i wouldn't qualify for a vehicle but the prophetic word came that she would get a japanese vehicle hallelujah she would get a japanese vehicle and it's, be, it's gonna be by way of america by favor with the bikes and now she is the favor she's only waiting for them to get licensed hold the cars she said a lot do usually hold the cars they held it for her and now the bank turned around and bless her with it now she's just waiting to take possession when they license it and ensure it in the season of what we call pandemic uh pestilence or even famine the lord is blessing his children supernaturally because the lord's doing and the lord's ways are not the world's ways god has a economic system or hedge against poverty and lack and it's called tithing and sowing and giving into good ground you hear me as long as the earth remains there'll be seed time and harvest and so we're seeing testimonies from all over the world we had a guy recently told us that man of god you spoke a word into my life many years ago that i would be the catalyst in my family to move all the idols first time prophesied him I, I, I he was on the live tell him he can move all the idols and he could be instrumental in moving all the idols in his family because the idols is what they serve in. he said man of god we now we are now, I've organized a group where we are now having prayer meeting and we're removing the ancient shrines in Uganda that our family served, all right, and that has been holding us back. We are getting rid of these shrines and we are waging war against those forces. And it's so good to hear the amazing testimonies of how God even purged a sister. She said, you know, God even gave me a dream where he, I was vomiting and bringing up stuff out of the dream so i told her that you know that's god really literally moving what they ever what they plan on you sometimes it's evil things pain hurt uh, uh uh wicked stuff that came from church hurt and church pain jezebel spirits in churches yeah yeah something jezebel spirit take control you preach until you sit down you know sit down or start to i uh, start to uh, uh make jazz and true true uh, 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 uh mockery uh, uh you know they're mocking you and throwing out subliminals and and shades on you uh, you know right while you there because they have a problem with you. They're beating you down. They're browbeating you. They're beating you into submission. And they try to embarrass you and expose you uh, so you can feel some sort of way because they have a problem with you because they see destiny and purpose on your life. Amen. So so we bless God for all those testimonies. Guys, keep sending the testimonies in. Don't be afraid of your testimony. Your testimony is your power. Amen. Your testimony is your hedge against what the enemy is trying to do. Amen. Also, your prophetic word. Do not take your prophetic word lightly. Begin to look at it, write it down, uh, and log it in. Uh, uh, pray over it every day wrestle with it fast over it ask god to bring it to pass because it will help you when you go through hard situations and times when the enemy is, is really buffeting you is the prophetic word that kept me and many other people that saw the word that was spoken of their life and it kept them and saved them the prophetic word has come to cause you to prosper believe in god and you shall be established believe in his prophets and you shall prosper amen so god has what prosperity attached to the prophetic ministry but particularly those who know it and so jezebel wants to keep the people in bondage 
and keep them in false worship, false idol, and a religious system that keeps them in poverty, lack, and war. You hear me? But God has spoken the word, even the spirit of multiplication in the times of famine. So God bless you. God bless you. I love you all. Pray by strength in the Lord, and we will see you real soon. Amen? Amen. Amen. <laughs> all right. Love you all. Bye-bye.